Welcome, everybody, to the Broken Campfire Podcast, episode 94. Yeah, 94. That's a big number. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm joined by... the biggest 95? I'm Andy, the host, and I'm joined by four other hosts. John, Flask, Hello. Greg, Hello. and Vito. Hello. That was Vito talking. Yeah, so Vito's not here this week. He said he had better things to do. I think wait, what? what? You, you said he was here. Yeah, wait, wait, is he here or is he not here? He's actually not here. He literally said he had better things to do. So. Oh, well, that was just weird because you said that he was yeah. here. Yeah. Seems like saying, a big lie on your part. I was you're really, a liar. Hey, if you're confused by what happened in the intro here, let us know. Brokencampfire at gmail.com or Twitter at brokencampfire. Or Vito BC at Gmail to get at him directly and tell him what you think of him. And you know what, guys? Today's episode is all about me. It's, that's why I'll be starting the roundtable. Next. Next. Good one, Greg. Good one, Greg. Thanks. I, I'm sure our listeners are dying to hear an update about Harry Potter, right? We kind of left them in a, in a weird spot last week. We were at the end of Goblet of Fire, and it's like, what's going to happen next? So, we um, we watched Order of the Phoenix and the Half Blood Prince this week. Yeah, we did. Yo, that Half Blood Prince was crazy. How just the Half- world gets swallowed in darkness at the end. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I think the world was swallowed in darkness. The whole movie, though, if you know what I mean. Oh yeah, that would it make was sense a very also. dark film because it was gross, yeah, could, grossly yeah, cause uncolored. Because light, because the lighting was grossly uncolored. Yeah, that's a problem also, with the latter half of the movies. I, I mentioned this to you guys, but it's just I've always disliked that that they're all desaturated and depressing. <laughs> like even that when they're I mean, outside, like in like the Quidditch pitch and stuff. That? I mean, they did it because like yeah, first to make of all, it was, like was oh, the late two thousands. Late 2000s, early 2010s, people were obsessed with desaturation in general and like and like very mute color grading. Uh, but then even the choices they make filmmaking wise, like when they're on the Quidditch pitch in one scene in an, an earlier movie, it would have been like a bright, sunny day or have something cool going on, like a storm. In this one, it's just like overcast and wet and it just looks like ugly. <laughs> it's like the magic is all sapped out of the world. Right. I don't understand yeah. those decisions. Yeah, there's no like whimsy left. And like I I don't know, it's like I get it. The films want to grow with the audience. And I think it actually does do that. But like you don't need to necessarily be extremely over with that. You know what I mean? It's right. fine to like have a little bit of levity in there. I Maturity think, does not equal la- like all whimsy just dying. <laughs> I think to their credit, I can definitely see what they were going for, especially with the Half Blood Prince. It was clearly like, you liked Magic Whimsy as a kid. You're older now. Now you're going to get more into like the teen romance comedy and drama. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot more like screen time. Like, felt like that kind of stuff was supposed to be like the bits that break the tension, you know? Which, uh, it, it just didn't w- work as well. Yeah, and that's not like a, you know, that's not to say that the movies aren't good anymore. It's just like the 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 texture of the entire piece is yeah, subdued sure. and depressing. Yeah, yeah, I still enjoyed watching them. I just Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed them. Grosser looking. They're good they're <laughs> good movies. So, I enjoy them. Um Are we, are we going to watch the part one and two next week of Death yeah, of I would Hollow? assume, right? Yeah. Good dude. Yeah. And then we're going to watch wanna... all the Fantastic Beasts films, and then we're going to watch a recording right. of the for the Cursed Child. Do um, we have to do that? The new one yes. came out recently and sucked really bad, right? I, I didn't really look at reviews, great reviews, but I wouldn't be surprised. It is not getting great reviews. Uh, but hey, you never know. You know Dumbledore could turn up. Maybe, but Mads uh, Mikkelsen. What? Yeah, Mads. I mean, it does have Mads as Grindelwald. But, uh, they must have been I, Mads I, I, for putting him in that movie. <laughs> I actually did not know until 
just looking stuff up about Harry Potter the other day when we were watching a movie that Fantastic Beasts, the one that just came out, was not the end of a trilogy. It's part three of a five. Which yeah, is that surprised just, me as well. It's just insane. <laughs> well, what are they going to do? Like they have like they're getting to the point where like they're they're literally going to just have to like do stuff that we saw in the movies. Like book five, like the last movie might end with that scene with with Dumbledore and little Tom Riddle. I I can't help but fe- yeah, I can't help but feeling that they made the first one as just like a one off. And I don't know the story behind this, but that they made the first one just a one off and then kind of just stumbled into like, well, this is the only thing we've got. So we kind of have to make it a franchise to keep up the IP in general. So this is our movie franchise now, even though it was never it never had the legs for that. I I, I don't know why I, I I I mean, I guess I do know why, but like I feel like people would have loved it even if it was shit. If instead it was a uh, like the new class at Hogwarts, it was just an, another group of kids with another mm-hmm. danger or something like that, I would have enjoyed it more if it was that. I would have also like probably you know shit on it for being like a repeat, whatever, not having any originality, or whatever. But I'm just saying compared to like Fantastic Beasts, you know. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's interesting because like. You know, in Hogwarts Legacy, we're going to be going to Hogwarts in the 1800s, but because Hogwarts is a, like a timeless uh, ancient castle, it's not really like anything's different at Hogwarts itself. Right. You know? It's just the freedom of the setting, for sure. Yeah. But then for Fantastic Beasts, I feel like part of the appeal or what they want to be the appeal is that it's, oh, it's the early you know 20th century uh, and, and a lot of it takes place in the Muggle world. But that stuff is like... Uh, not interesting, and I think it's just because of <laughs> what they put in there. You know, it, like it right. could be interesting, probably, if it was focusing more on the wizarding world. Uh, which I, I mean, it is to some extent. He's but. got a human sidekick in the movies, a yeah. Muggle sidekick. You, you think they, you think they found that they couldn't just open the box of making a Harry Potter movie without all the way opening the box and trying to make a Harry Potter movie? Yeah. Why the hell would I watch a movie about wizards when there's like no wizards in it? I'm it it's not wizards. It's yeah. It, it's just, it kind of goes back to what you we were saying about the magic whimsy and like how good and strong that felt. Like the first few couple films are like, they're just a delight to watch, you know? Um, it goes boring back to all that. muggles but, and where to find them. <laughs> it's like, you, it's like, how do you make like a boring ass, bland ass movie when like you're trying to exist in the same like continuum as like that it's like people are going to immediately draw comparisons and be like no fuck you that sucks I mean like For granted sure. they ever even the first movie had the underlying plot of like the the wizarding war starting but right. it definitely feels like they sort of backdoored into um wizarding world uh, I did like, not expect events. this to be about like Grindelwald versus Dumbledore. Yeah, like, exactly. Not it feels that like that like, they came around at that from the wrong direction, <laughs> like an uninteresting yeah. direction. I don't know. It, I I would have never found that interesting because like we get scant few details about it in the books, which which is fine. It's okay if you just imagine what happened and like you come up mm-hmm. with your own ideas and you get the freedom to explore. You don't have to like have like fucking a triple A movie made about it to un- to like you know get enjoyment out of that idea you knew enough about it you know yes i think i want to see i'm not saying it's a bad thing that dumbledore is gay canonically don't get me wrong but i do feel like this some of that arises from like just how it became a thing that jk rowley got out came out later and said that dumbledore was gay you know just Mm -hmm. like the how that like ran in the media and that kind of thing i feel like that is like some of the sentiment that this is like resting on like how you know, people really like that, and some people really hated it. But I think people have grown to like that more over time. Does and that uh, does being gay affect you anyway? And being a wizard, do you get like cool, stronger powers, or is was she just like, oh yeah, he's gay, undetermined? Well, if you think about it, and I'm not saying anything about J.K. Rowling, but we have one gay character confirmed. We have two gay characters confirmed, and both of them die alone. So, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, but. They're both pretty fucking strong wizards, right? 
I mean, yeah, that's they are, right. They are the strongest it's Dumbledore. Wizards. So that, I mean, gay. The, the, that man, the, I watched him clap I, a phoenix and explode. So JK may have very complex feelings here as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry that she feels like that, but whatever. I, I'm joking. You know, I'm just poking fun at it. Uh, I was gonna say I want to see a uh, I want to see a Harry Potter x Mad Max. Uh, style movie where it's in the future and the human world has destroyed itself and only the wizards have survived so they're just like taking the train to hogwarts but it's all like it's all like uh armored with like spike walls and and a big battering ram in the front and it's got like oars on top shooting at raiders coming up trying to get on the the humans are away and they want the the castle is the last bastion of of wizarding kind against the uh, marauding sweet. mutants. That is, that is a cool idea. My much less cooler idea that I immediately thought of when you said that was a uh, Mad Max strapped to the front of the car going, ah, you know, like the car is yeah. barreling along and the car just smacks head first into an invisible Hogwarts. And you get like a nice <laughs> cartoon splat. Maybe that's how it starts. Maybe that's how they discover the, the barrier. <laughs> right. It's like They're the just going prologue nuts in the movie. Yeah. In the Scottish oh, Highlands yeah. and they find it. Yeah. That's Harry Potter. Anybody else got anything to say? No. no, no. Magic's cool. Yeah, magic. I like magic's those cool. things. I mean, I, I, yeah, like I mean the... I've seen it many times before, but I'm still having fun. Uh, yeah. yeah. Was gonna... It's just it's Harry Potter, man. It's, not, it's nice to watch. Yeah, good times. I think you mean Harry Potter. Well, I, I would be remiss if I didn't specify as the last thing that uh, Vito did watch all of movie six, he claims. Uh, he also got a speeding ticket watching it, and <laughs> if he wants to explain that story, I'll let him do that on his time next week. Uh-huh. <laughs> I am still... I played some more Subnautica, and I've still got it installed, but it's a tenuous install, and I've somewhat moved on, and I might go back, but I don't know. Um, I recognize. I, I talk with Flask about all this game. I, I recognize the game's like great strengths and like creating like a big, cool underground, un- underwater world that feels neat to explore. Um, but it just didn't do it for me. I think if you don't already have, if that idea alone it doesn't like titillate you, you maybe don't go after this game. Um, I found I found myself a little. A little too annoyed by some of the bugs I was running into, a bit of the jank, um, and the crafting stuff was 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 certainly like way more accessible than most crafting games I played. But like, you know, ultimately, I was getting I got bored of the of the loop of finding crafting stuff. Um, the last thing I did in the game is I built the Cyclops in the prawn suit, uh, and I felt like, all right, so these things are going to enable me to go much deeper. I'm gonna. The point of me going much deeper is to find more blueprints, and then more, even more crafting materials, so I can come back, and then escape. And I and I just had this feeling like, I feel like I, I feel like I'm good. Mm-hmm. You're gonna go try the. the it's it's the second game or is it a DLC? I, I was always it's the second game, right? It's not like a two. I I have no intention on doing that honestly. If it, especially if, maybe if I finish Subnautica and like I feel different at the end, but I know that Subnautica two is generally held in uh, somewhat less esteem than Subnautica, so oh, I wow. feel like I I'm probably not going to I'm probably definitely not going to like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel that. I mean, I've never played either of them. I just never I don't know never caught on to me. So I I definitely and. I'm I'm just gonna say in because I don't know when we're gonna talk about it again, but I'm gonna I definitely end my time with Subnautica feeling like I've played a cool and good game that is maybe just not for me. Yeah, I was gonna say at least, at least I mean, not that, right now. I, I I said as much. You know, you don't have to keep playing. Obviously, no, no one has to keep playing anything if they're not feeling it. And I definitely did kind of like what you were just alluding to. Did did like a lot of the elements of the game when I played it. So like a lot of the stuff that doesn't uh, affect you at all or touch you in any particular way did get me a little bit. And and I enjoyed, uh, you know, being underwater and exploring and discovering and all that sort of stuff. For sure. Um, 
but also, you know, there's there's other stuff. Like some people just really do love the crafting. I don't really care about crafting. It's just kind of a means to an end for me. And the kind, really the less of it, the better for me. But I was able to tolerate it because I liked uh, what it, what the ends were for those means. And some people, the crafting is like all, they love that progression, you know. Um, and some people love just like building bases and and dominating the environment, which also wasn't as much what I was see, in for. See, I that is something that like I would be more down for, I feel like, in that. But that that was one of my and maybe that's just a specific stumbling block of mine is that I'm more into the idea of crafting if I'm building a cool base. Um specifically if like it's not if I have to worry about being efficient and if I have to worry about being safe. You know what I mean? Those those, mm-hmm. those things just get me. So like I, I kind of like poo poo on things that like oh the this the building is actually pretty shallow in the game. LOL. As far as like the <laughs> variety of things that you can build at least. Though I do like the how the look of the sea lab when it's done. And then yeah, I th- I the feel other like, thing is that there's no uh, omnipresent danger. Such that like I don't really have to like reinforce my base beyond just making sure the number is positive. You know what I mean? Sure. That kind of thing. Yeah, I feel like the entire game, the the way base building is designed is geared towards um not dominating the environment and just and just uh being kind of having your little bubble of safety or or um operation in not necessarily a hostile environment but in an environment that you maybe shouldn't you're you're not you know uh, suited for as an organism <laughs> you know my, so my like, brain just like i get that but my brain just doesn't know how to like reconcile that with like but i need a central base where like i pool all my resources yeah you know what i mean they're like you're collecting a whole bunch of shit like you can build lockers and like name them and shit like that it's like i don't want to have to be fucking constantly hauling between like four or five different little bases i'm just gonna have like one big yes. base and like occasionally build an outpost which i did do that i would build like little outposts with scanner rooms that kind of thing i will say it's too bad that uh you stopped before or i should say it's too bad that the point at which you stopped happened to be right after you built the cyclops because the cyclops to me was like a whole new stretch of the game where that was like my mobile base and i i really enjoyed the sort of um deep diving with that it's the submarine for the people who are unaware um deep diving with the submarine and like using it as a mobile base a forward operating post and a silent running when i needed to like slip by stuff big you know larger creatures i like that stuff yeah sure so it's too bad that's cool I I mean it is literally that thought that has kept me from uninstalling is that I know I'm at a potentially turning point in the game, so in my experience, hmm. it would be a shame to stop now. But also, yeah, I, I was personally invested in like the seeing how the uh, the plot, as it is, such as it is, I should say, is uh, was resolved, and what the if I'm going to if I'm going to spoiler warning, spoilers for Subnautica until twenty thirty seven. I got to say, like, that I don't agree with at all. Like, the plot as it is. Because, <laughs> like, the plot was, I f- spoiler warning, the plot was I fucking landed in the water. I- I'm shipwrecked, whatever. Uh, and then I get, and, and somebody tries to rescue me. They get shot down. I discover there's an alien uh, base here. I discover that I'm infected by a virus and I can't shut down the weapon. So immediately I know one of my main objectives is going to be to cure myself of a virus so I can escape. And then the second thing is that I explored the only thing above water that I can see immediately from spawn to explore. And I found a, a, a blueprint for a rocket platform. So I was like, okay, so I know the second goal in the game is to build a rocket. So like, I don't, I don't know, man, like may, maybe I'm just being an asshole about it, but like, I feel like pretty early on, I knew that I was going to go really deep, cure myself. And then build a rocket and escape. But maybe I'm just missing the forest or the trees and not appreciating like the little details, like the settlements and that kind of thing along the way. I mean, I think the discrepancy here is that I just fucking love uh, learning more about alien worlds and ancient aliens and precursor aliens and stuff like that. And uh, being in a world that I'm not familiar with and learning more about it in general. Uh, and also just like, 
I don't know, just discovering things. <laughs> um, I, I guess uh, you know. maybe maybe I, maybe I didn't take this game seriously enough or something, but I I, I tend to feel that way as well. I, but like I, the I origins of the virus are part of what I enjoyed. Yeah. Anyway. Sure. I just was not naturally interested in this world. I suppose. Mm-hmm. Moving on, we got. Uh, I I kind of moved on from Subnautica, like we just discussed. And I started playing Weird West. Oh. Came out last week. Or the week before, John? Uh, the week before. Week before. No, last week. I think I I just played it for like an hour. Yeah. So I'm not going to talk, talk with much spoilers at all, because I know that many of you, and I hope many of you do play it, but I will talk a little bit about the first character of Five. Weird West is kind of a top-down slash isometric um, it's hard to describe. It's not quite a twin stick shooter. Is it like it's Fallout? Not, not at all. <laughs> Closer See, to that, a twin stick shooter than Fallout, but it's somewhere in the middle, like right? Like it's it is an yeah, RPG. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say it's not a CRPG and it's not a twin stick shooter, but it's somewhere in the middle, maybe closer to twin stick shooter. But like okay. the general gameplay of it is that you are controlling. You are this uh, kind of like formless passenger being you don't really know a whole lot about it um at least i don't so far and this is all stuff you want in the beginning and you're kind of branded onto this lady bounty hunter and the first character of the game is the bounty hunter and what you found is that uh you wake and her son's been killed and her husband's been kidnapped so you got no choice but to dig up your old irons become a bounty hunter again gather some loot, solve some mysteries, and go save your husband. The act, the setting is like an Old West, but not American West, clearly, that uh, just kind of like stylized at, after it with gunslingers, uh, shitty little towns, farmers, that kind of thing, with a tinge of like monsters and Lovecraftian type horror and like old fantasy stuff. And an example mm-hmm. is that, you know, sometimes, I, or one time I was attacked by some a highway men, and I started blasting him when one of them turned into a siren and started running after me, and I had to blast his fucking siren. <laughs> Blasting. More than, more than once I've come across in my travels, like, a random group of, like, priests summoning something through a ritual circle. But the actual the feel of it the is that... It sounds like it pertains to me a lot. <laughs> that really it sounds is, yeah, to I don't want to spoil it. It's very cool. It, um, it's very cool, and, and I've I'm trying to say this like three or four times. I just keep it in sidetrack. The way you control the game is that you are actually just playing as one character. You can recruit companions. They're AI controlled. And you're moving around with the WSAD. You have full camera control. Um, and if you uh, hold down the right click, you aim. And if you uh, left click, you fire. There's no turn base. Nothing like that. You do get action points, but the action points are for use of like abilities. That's one thing I'm going to touch on. Uh, maybe the abilities get better so far, but you start with max pain bullet time, and that ability so far is like far eclipse everything else I've seen. I was just say it's almost it's makes one of those the game, games. The little bit I played, it almost makes the game kind of too easy. I, I'm pretty sure there's some bugs with it, so I actually like try to limit myself from it. Like oh, yeah, one for bug, sure. one bug I discovered, dude. If you reload wallet while doing it, you can basically like it reloads instantly. So you can basically rapid fire like a shotgun or anything by like, uh, like alternating between shooting and then uh, tapping R to reload. Yeah, j- just by using it once or twice in the time I play it, I was like, all right, this is like your, your your panic button, your get out of trouble button. Right. Uh, I try to not use it as much as possible. I, I picked did, up another ability that's also broken too. Which, well, which like one the, did you pick? I picked one that I thought was pretty broken as well, but I liked it. Rifle Silent Sentry. Hell yeah, dude! Called. Sentry Sniper, dude. Yeah, I've but, been but using that it, like it's exclusive. Just too easy. It's too easy, dude. I've been do. I I did that, and then on my uh, perks, I've been buffing up my ambush damage, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, so, so the like, rifle one, you get a a free rifle shot on somebody. And nobody in the area will know where it came from. Especially it's a free shot that does critical damage. <laughs> and usually you can just yeah. one-shot people. In yeah. my experience so far in the, the little hour or two. Yeah, so I mean, maybe there'll be some balancing or whatnot. Um, yeah, those are actually like the only two abilities that I've run into so far. I will say that, like, 
there is a bit of like you can tell this is a small team that made the game. So there, there's some roughness around the edges. There's some bugs. Um, the side quests so far have been really shallow in my experience and just like a way to get money. Um, which is fine. The main quest has been interesting enough. And maybe I just haven't discovered all the cool things. I've, I, I was a little worried that already in the first couple of hours, I've, I've been to a couple areas that were just total repeats of another area that I've already been to, like the actual exact same layout with some slight, like table chair differences type thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, eh, interesting. So, well, let's, oh, God. I would say, I don't know, spoilers. It looks like you may have unlocked a second character. Did they play any different? I only played that character for like a minute. I, I played it long enough to take that screenshot and save. It was pretty late. That was a couple of days ago. And I had just finished the bounty hunter quest. Uh, I think uh, I started with a melee weapon, and that, that's all I can say. I, I didn't really explore much more than that. Now I have a question. Yeah. Uh, when you said the side quests are shallow, do you mean in what you're actually doing, like your task? Or the 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 uh, the storyline of that those side quests, or both? A little bit of both. I mean, like it, it's not bad, but it's stuff like a guy asked me to find his Sunday best coat for a hundred dollars. So then I go to the location he indicated. I kill a bunch of guys, then I get a Sunday best coat. Okay, you know what I mean. So they or, don't really have that much style either. They're like they're not there, complicated, there's a, and also they don't. They might spiral out more than I'm giving them credit for. There's one quest that I ignored because well, I'll, I'll just say what it is. It's not a big spoiler, but I got to this uh, random farm or something and I just explored there. Like I just came up across it on my way to something else. As soon as I got in there, there was a guy who was like, Hey, stay out of my barn. We we're doing a distillery here and you don't want to mess with us. And I was like, all right, whatever. And then one of his goons came up and offered me a hundred dollars to fuck with the other distillery. And I decided not to do that because I'm like, all right, I'm a bounty hunter, and I'm just trying to get my husband back. I'm probably not going to get in the middle of this. <laughs> but I guess it, it might have spiraled out into a bigger quest line that I just ignored. I kind of doubt it. Okay. But like I said, the main quest has been interesting enough, and the game doesn't have to be all that long uh, and have a whole bunch of side quests and stuff. I'm just commenting. Uh, yeah. More for information purposes. Um, that's all the good and a little bit of the bad. I definitely, definitely recommend the playing this game. John, I don't know if you tried playing with the controller, but I tried for like 30 seconds in a minute and I was like, this just sucks so much ass. Uh, I feel bad oh, really? for anybody who's trying, I feel bad for anybody who's trying to play this on, um, console right now, but it feels like the aiming, is just, the aiming is just so much worse. On well, I'll say I was playing in the controller because I figured... It's like a console game, so it's supposed to play good. That was my thought, too. I was also having a little trouble aiming, and I just figured I had to get good. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to take a little getting used to. Because, like, you can point a direction, and you also have a little bit of depth you can play with to, like, get a critical shot. Like, if you land, like, the cursor right on them. And that was it was very hard to do with the, the analog stick. Yeah, but the mouse is, like, baby easy. It's literally made for the mouse, so you can tell. And, like you can go infinitely far with the depth or like, you know, as far as like your weapon goes, whatever. Right. Uh, it, I mean, aiming is, is, is easy enough. Like there's definitely moments, especially when you're surrounded by dudes, especially like when there's a lot popping off where it gets tough. But like, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly pleased by like how fun it is to like be in a random encounter. And I pull my gun and all of a sudden both the guys in front of me are dead just because I unload into them both of them that fast. You know what I mean? It's really cool. Yeah. yeah I'm going to try uh, it with mouse keyboard next time. Yeah, no, I, I I tried with mouse and keyboard for a bit, and then I tried controller for a bit, and I was like, this sucks, I'm not doing this. I don't know. Yeah, I'll have more to say. That's Weird West. I'm on the second character. There's five, so more to come here soon. Weird. What else you got? Flask? I think He's that's got all flask. I got. So I'm passing it on, passing the ball to Flask. Oh. Uh. My round table, I see, I see. That was a longer round table than, than I usually do, but I did throw Harry Potter in there, too. Yeah, forget how dare you, bro. Yeah, I was excited yeah. about Weird West. A little it's a cringe, game. bro. I also had a lot to say about uh, Subnautica. I just had a lot to say this week. I ain't gonna apologize for it. You can't make me. 
All right. Well, uh, I'll talk about this because now the veto's not here. Uh, I, it's it's funnier to talk about it now. Um, the Halo TV show. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess we've there's another had two episode episodes tonight, right? so far. Yeah, two episodes so far, and a third one released today. We have not watched it yet. Uh, but so while oh the first one was kind of a seesaw of emotions, and some people had some of the good things to say, some people had bad things to say. Second one left pretty much everyone uh, sour. <laughs> it it didn't yeah. uh, it didn't go over well with our group. So I think I was one of the ones who was on more on the plus side of the first episode. And it's not because I actually expected it would be good. I was just mm-hmm. pleasantly surprised at how different it was. And I thought that the angle of Chief defecting from the UNSC because he like is beginning to grapple with his emotions in some way. That he and he as a person who doesn't have emotions. I thought that that could be an interesting story. That that was that, yeah. that was the most praise I'll give it. As always an adaptation just being different from the source material is not instantly a bad thing. It's, it's right. it can go places and still do its own thing and be good, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like they're doing the best work with what they have chosen. Mm-hmm. Um. And I have four. I have criticisms in four points here. I just want to go over briefly. If you don't, if you don't mind indulging me. <laughs> As he pulls out a comically large list that rolls onto the floor. <laughs> yeah, it rolls all the way down the... God damn it. I, w- I had some books nearby. I wish I f- still had a textbook at my desk. I would slam on my desk right now. <laughs> no, of One. course. What, what do you got? One. Uh, the war between humanity and the Covenant doesn't seem to matter much, nearly as much as uh, politics, to the humans at least. Um, you know, because like... The right. Covenant should be a genocidal extinction threat to humanity, but the UNSC doesn't seem that concerned. So even if we're in the early stages of a war, the disparity in weapons technology should have like ha- should have the Covenant just blitzing the UNSC's defensive efforts, and the UNSC sh- uh, the UNSC should be desperate at this point, but they're not. They seem kind of just going about their business. And one might say, you know, well, the, the story is different. It's not the same progression of the war. But if that's so, that to me just makes it not as good. <laughs> you know, the desperation in the original story was better than what they're doing here. Um, yeah. Point two. Uh, there's barely a sense of mystery or discovery at all. Instead of, you know, just landing on this impossible superstructure of unknown origin and you know slowly discovering its origins and and purpose as the covenant work at their own ends whatever they may be we just learned that the halo which we haven't even seen yet is a death star from some crazy human who was like abducted by aliens all right flash i got uh, some questions what, what's what's pause right here let's go wait back to, what let's go back well let's go back to point one real quick you know, okay. talked about the desperation of the war, just for context yeah. for our listeners, because this story does not actually take place during Halo 1. It takes place before, and even before Halo Reach. So, uh, you might know a bit more about the Halo, Halo lore, I know but bit. was the desperation around the Covenant present before the fall of Reach, or is this, or could we like be super generous to the show and plausibly deny that um, it's a bad characterization because we just haven't seen the full of reach yet. That's that's part of what I was getting at with the weapons technology uh point. Okay, yeah. That even before reach went down, uh, every uh engagement between the two forces was almost overwhelmingly always uh covenant vic- victory. Because of the disparity in weapons technology, just their shields, their plasma technology was so far advanced of what humans have that uh, every engagement would end in defeat for the UNSC. Very occasionally they get like, they scrape out a win, like uh, Keys invented a technique that that did surprise a couple Covenant ships and he got the better of them. But like that was seen as the exception that proved the rule, you know, the rule was... 
Covenant are dominating every engagement. And then when Reach fell, that was like the, oh shit, humanity is probably fucked now <laughs> moment. That was really like, now we're on the edge of extinction because Earth is like now the last bastion. Okay. Uh, okay. And that's why, you know, the, the Pillar of Autumn escaping with the Chief, because he's also, at least in the, you know, the lore of the first game before they retconned it mm -hmm. a bit, he's also kind of seen as the last Spartan and therefore the last on the ground hope of humanity. And they're kind of talking about point two a bit, only partially related. Mm -hmm. um, around this time, they know nothing of anything like a Halo. Uh, Nobody should know anything about the Halo at this point. The Halos at this point, I don't think the Covenant may know about them in re a religious context, for you know, from their own researches. But they should never have seen one, like found one, and they should not know what they. They definitely should not know what they do in reality. But are, but are they actually expecting to find a in the game lore? Are they actually expecting to find a giant um, cosmic superstructure? Uh, I forget if they know that they exist, but they definitely are surprised when they they chase the Pillar of Autumn and find it. And they're like, holy shit. They seem to know that it's important to them. Again, they don't know what it does, but they may know that they're that these halos exist in in some way. Because they seem to be awed by it in like a religious that's, manner. That's all I got so far. If anybody else wants okay. to jump in. Uh, the first episode was fine. The second one was just slow and not fun to watch. And yeah, I just don't. I don't know. I didn't have high hopes for this when it was coming out. So I just. Bought expectation. I was not interested in watching this, and I have yet to watch it. <laughs> and probably will not watch it. Well, I'm not finished with my points. So Shit, I will okay. continue. <laughs> Sure, man. Um, Keep going. Yeah, so much less interestingly, apparently the Covenant just want to wipe out all life from the get-go. They th That seems really, really boring to me, but okay. I mean, in the That's just also, for context. That's uh, also, to me, very what, boring. Like, yeah, yeah. why? Why? Like, what's, what's the point? In the games, uh, they think that it'll lead them to their paradise, activating the Halos. Obviously, the Prophets may have some sort of you know, a better well, understanding a, um, of what the halos are, but they wasn't are. Wasn't there a big thing with like the flood where they, they thought like humans did something with the flood and they're like, Oh, these f fucking guys. Or was that my crazy? I don't know. I, don't know I thought it was like something know. flood related also. Like they found like one of our places that are about one of ours. Jesus. Like one of the uh, UNSC places like overran and they were like, all right, we need to like kill everybody. Because they release they release these uh, things. Well, they I mean the covenant also do worry about the flood. I forget if there's something I'm I'm forgetting that you're specifically referring to, but that does sound like a familiar situation. So maybe maybe there's something you're referring to. It's like it, the covenant is the flood. Is the flood just another alien species that just so happened to land be on the <laughs> halo, or or no. is that like created? So this remember. is this is deep diving, but the flood were accidentally created by, uh by the forerunners the prophets dudes right oh the, no that. By I the it was made by those so gross it's dudes. it's a really so, funny explanation when you put it like this i'll just say it real quick if you don't mind go ahead uh so there were a species of being a race of being called the precursors before the forerunners they were like they were like to the forerunners what the forerunners are to humans names yeah well john, you know they're just john, placeholders john, about the actual races john where's your game <laughs> yeah, where's your game, John? True, what, dude. What's, the, what's the name of the alien God race in your game? It. What's the name of the alien race in your game? Andes. He doesn't have one. All right, what's the, yeah. what's the prophet? What's the prophet of the Andes? We don't have halos prophet here. Andes. We have don't. We have donuts. Mm. Oh my I God! Deny, it's the I, I can't deny that these, that these are like incredibly good names. All right. Yeah, yeah. He's got go, you there. Go on. Yeah, yeah. Be, yeah. Uh, yeah, the precursors were before the forerunners, and the forerunners before were before humanity and the covenant. Uh, the precursors died out at some point. I forget why. But uh, the forerunners, when they came about, found or had precursor remains. Um, I think 
Oh, wait, I think it was that the precursors, like, like, dispersed themselves or some shit. Like, they devolved themselves into, like, goo or powder or some something like that. Some kind of, like, stasis technology they had to keep their race alive, but mm-hmm, in, like, mm-hmm. a different form. The, right. pre- the, the Forerunners then, when they came about, found that form of the precursors. Dr- drank, drank the goop. Essentially, yeah. They turned the precursor powder into, like evolution goo and injected it into their like pets and stuff so they just like injected an ancient race of aliens into their dogs and then over many 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 years like millennia and upon millennia um that injection of precursor like dna or whatever uh mutated both you know because it got into everything after that point obviously so it mutated both animals and uh, the forerunner into the flood, and uh, I think there may have been some other catalyst that like truly made the flood happen. But essentially, oh, that's what I, hap- I that's know, what made I, the I flood. I don't know the forerunners were the flood. Yeah, yeah. Now, people. I, I don't want to be that guy because that sounds interesting at all. But I feel like I've heard this before in the uh, the alien universe. Where they oh, did you. the same thing to those dudes, I'm pretty sure. Like, uh, I think like I in the game specifically, uh, there's like this black like mold stuff, uh, that we find, and I think it's like some old alien race that they like just broke down. Huh. Just sounds sounds familiar, dude. Hmm, Doesn't sound suspicious. like Halo's very original. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, Halo does, it is an interesting universe, but I wouldn't be surprised if they were just like, while they were doing background lower stuff, they were just like taking inspiration from other sources. So, somebody saw Alien. Somebody saw Alien. Um, okay, let's move on to point four. Well, so yeah, that that was my actual, that was a that was a tangent explanation of where, where Flood come from. Um, and then, of course, now that Forerunners have made their own greatest enemy and the universe's greatest enemy in the form of a an undying viral race that wants to subsume everything yeah uh they've they they then have to activate the halos anyway uh so i was on the point about um yeah covenant want to wipe out all life which is stupid uh i said this to you guys at one point but i'll reiterate it for the audience i always loved that um the beginning of Halo where, you know, Keys is like, we made a blind jump and then, and then seeing this completely unprecedented uh, ring world structure and the Covenant are freaking out about it. And the humans are just, you know, scrambling to figure stuff out, uh, discover everything about it. And there's a sense of urgency and stakes oh, that, that is ideas. just missing from this show. Giving you uh, ideas? Flash, would, you, would you have been so hyped if the first episode ended like this? They... The, the magic forerunner glow just simply repairs the ship and chief escapes and he starts fiddling with buttons and uh, the girl asks, what are you going to do? And he says, I'm going to make a blind jump. And the episode ends <laughs> as he like fade to credits as he blind jumps. That's what I was. I mean, he didn't say that at the end of the episode. So, you know, it's different. But uh, that's what I was expecting to happen in the second episode before the second episode aired. I was expecting it to be the blind jump that leads him to Halo, uh, but that is yet to come. I wasn't I wasn't giving him that much credit. I was expecting it to lead him to Halo, but I wasn't expecting it to be like the context of like a blind jump, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because the reason for the blind jump in uh, the, the reason that they do them as a as a matter of policy is because they don't want the Covenants to track them back to Earth. They don't, you know, they don't want them to be led back to any human world populated human world anyway uh yeah no, point number three john is a special chosen one it seems uh and cortana is a special created one apparently they're not just the the right people in the right place at the right time they're the only people who can and which means that they will they don't you don't which have to, means that to they show will. you yeah I, uh, yeah, and, I, I do not care about these flashbacks we get with for, uh, from John Halo. I, I do not want to see him as a child or how he got abducted or whatever to happen. I just do not give a fuck. So I think that is more interesting 
if the, it was more about like John's like identity and less about like all this like stupid bullshit that he's dealing with. You oh, mean yeah. the childhood that doesn't matter at all? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's funny John brings that up because uh, this John, our John, brings that up because uh, that was point four, actually. He nice. has to deal with the uh, the reemerging memories and emotions that the Forerunner artifact activated in him or something. Yeah. Like, and of course, they, they dedicate ample time in each episode to let him, you know, ruminate on what ha- what is happening to him and i'm not saying it's sacrilege to make master chief a different character but just because it's a different move are we sure that it's the right move because i don't it doesn't like you were just saying andy it's like that's not there's no reason to focus on his childhood that doesn't matter right. at all in the right. context of what's right. happening now right um but but like the the idea behind what they want to focus on is a good idea like, like the idea of like focusing on, on the difference between John and, and Master Chief. That I mean, that, that that would be a compelling arc for. It could be a compelling arc. Yeah, you but can like, do that for a TV every, show. Every time, every time they do a flashback, what they need to do is just instead like have a scene where like a kid runs up to John and asks him like an ethical hypothetical, and like. <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Master Chief. So. On one side, there's there's five kids tied up, and on and, and you don't know any of them. But on the other side, you you joke, but I would actually like that. That would never happen, but I would actually like that more, even though it's the dumbest shit. Well, that's what I'm I, saying. Like, like if, I, if I literally would actually, like that more. Yeah, I, I would. Like if that it was more. about like ethical quandaries that he was <laughs> having to deal with, you, oh, man. you would you would at least learn more about him than than flashbacks that don't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it was just about his like the the the, the dichotomy between Master Chief and John, that's fine. You know, it's a TV show. He's a character. You, you guys know character. why it matters, though, right? I mean, you guys have already figured it out, I'm sure. And it's because uh, Covenant Human Lady is, of course, also a chosen one. And throughout mm-hmm. the flashbacks, we will find that she and John have a uh, shared familial or friendly something, a young childhood tie. That explains why they're both chosen people uh, and explains why John doesn't remember her. I honestly did not uh, did not think it so far into the muck of stupidity, but I could see that happening. Yeah, I did no, not. I, I thought I thought of most far. of that like 20 seconds ago. But like the, the idea of her being the chosen one is also that that part is actually clear. <sighs> it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, did anyone play the Halo games and say to themselves, damn. This would be better if John explored his pathos every chapter. What what really worries me is that like somebody played the Gear series and saw the 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 lady lady locust and was like, "Wow, that's cool." <laughs> I mean, also like in the games, he's not an emotionless machine. He like he's a stoic for sure. He open up he opens up extremely subtly. And rarely, but like he has a a dry, almost like almost imperceptible sense of humor, but that it just like peeks out every now and then. He he's not a a, a mute protagonist. I don't know, but they I, they didn't play know. the games, did they? I I sincerely, I mean, we we've yet to see where this goes, but the Lady Covenant. It, it bothers me because like. If they wanted to do the easy, lazy thing that would that would still be better television, just focus a hundred percent on the arbiter. Like I'm sure that like that you can make a compelling like second character like contrast between Chief, who's like trying to like you know break out of the UNSC, and Arbiter, who's like the opposite, like completely zealous. You know what I mean? Yeah. At least before his fall, which you would see throughout happen throughout the season. You know what I mean? And that would be compelling. I think that would be definitely be better just in the sense that I think everyone who had any inkling of Halo when they saw that was going to be a plot element, the, the Covenant Lady, immediately recognized it as a complete misfire before yeah. even seeing what she gets up to. It's like just, oh, yeah, that's going to be a complete misfire. Yeah. Wrong absolutely. direction. Anyway. 
That's all I wanted to point say. Five. That's all I wanted to say about it. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say oh, about the Halo. You didn't have any show. other points. Uh, I have Those are my four five. points. Okay. Uh, Quan Ho, whatever. Mm-hmm. What what's her name? Quan. Quan Ha. Uh, Quan Ha. Quan Ha is a cool character, actually, but she was literally put on a hit list and almost fucking killed by the UNSC. And like, not even a day later, she's like pouting that Chief isn't taking her back there. It's like, how do you not understand this? Like, why do you, what is there not to get? Yeah, that anyway. was a silly scene. To, yeah. That, that was just a small scene, but that's all I got. Those are little details that make you feel like, do they, are they not paying attention? Are they not like thinking about this? Like it's a coherent story, right? Like it, it, things just, just don't make sense or don't connect at all. It's like, it always just boggles my mind. Maybe this is like one of those horrific writer shops with like 40 people and they just like delegate out different scenes and somebody <laughs> like just hastily cobbles it together. Could be. All right. Uh, as far as games I played, I have uh, part two to my itch.io <laughs> okay. journey. So I'll just run down a, another list of titles for you, for your, your pleasure. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm actually going to post them, uh, to, to you guys as I talk about them just to like, let you see, because before I think you were looking up each individual game on like a storefront. Um, first one, Kiwi 64. It's, uh, from the same dev as, uh, McBat 64 and Tori 3D, which I talked about last time. And it was his first game, so it's just one level, very short. And he's definitely gotten better at, at making these little games. But it's essentially just jank banjo, uh, you know, banjo kazooie. But I did just see an announcement trailer for a super Kiwi 64, so I, I, I guess we'll see this uh, an expanded game featuring this character and, of course, this style. I gotta say that oh, I uh, didn't actually post it. There we go. I know I know that these are not the only good games on the list, but I am most interested in these Banjo Kazooie knockoffs. <laughs> Me too, but but be just because I like 3D platformers from that era. Oh, same here. From the you know, the around that era. For sure. Uh the next one is uh Pathogen X, which is just a demo by the same dev as uh Hypnagogia Hypnagogia. Which uh, came, I highly recommended on that that previous episode. And this is a third person survival horror game with an over the shoulder perspective. But right now, it just consists of a uh, randomized arcade mode where you have to retrieve an item in the level and then make it back to the start of the area. And it's 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 nicely presented, but I had three problems with it. One is uh, the feedback from shooting enemies is non-existent on either end, so it just feels bad. Uh, as soon as you transition into a new room, because it works like uh, Resident Evil doors, all the enemies in the room just suddenly or immediately beeline for you. So there's no tactics. You just either stand still and kill them all as they approach, or you run past them before they can reach you. And then the third thing is... Uh, you know, the camera is like RE4, except it's too far to the right. Or the character is too far to the left, maybe. Either way, it feels wrong to have your guy, like, completely to the side of the screen. It's just it's just not quite right to me. But still, it, even if saying all that, I still hope it becomes something someday, because it's I like the whole style. Right, right on, it's rated H. For what? Uh, what does that even say? I don't know. <laughs> Hardcore, perhaps. Haunted. It's sorry. H for H- haunted. Oh, haunted. Jonathan. Oh, it's part of the whole PS1 haunted or haunted PS1. Oh, shit. okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. right. Uh, next game is Eldritch. I don't. Sorry, I was just posting the link. Dude, this game looks so cool. The Which pathogen one. one. Oh yeah, yeah, it does. That that's why I'm saying oh, I man. hope it. I hope he turns into a full game and fixes some of the issues that yeah, I mentioned. Definitely, because I would play that. This looks fucking crazy. It looks it. Yeah, try it out. I mean, it's a free demo, so yeah. Even with the things I mentioned, oh, dude, 
I've played this game, Eldritch. Eldritch, yeah, great Have game, you? great game. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's a bit that's uh, a bit of an older one now because it's from 2013. So I'm not yeah. surprised. Uh, it's a first person adventure roguelike where you go through randomly generated dungeon levels. Uh, I thought it was all right. I think it was decently fun, to, decently fun to play actually. Um, and I was struck by its similarity to Minecraft adventure maps in both visuals and the way the everything is constructed. That is also what it reminded me of when I played it back then. Oh yeah, where I was like, oh, nice. So I wouldn't be surprised if this developer, you know, started on Minecraft and making those types of maps. Maybe. Could be. I played some of those back in the day. They were fun. Yeah, it's it's uh not too much to that game, but it's a it's a roguelike, so you keep getting and, and randomly generated dungeons, so you keep getting new kind of stuff. Not too new. <laughs> it's just limited uh palette, if you know what I mean. Limited new. Uh Button City. Button City is a low poly uh narrative adventure game about animal people playing arcade games um i mean it's their it's the little like you know it's their lives friendships and going about town and stuff but all day well it's summer vacation for the characters so Uh, they 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 go to the arcade i was gonna say scrolling scrolling down like every screenshot looks like a different gameplay it's it's exactly yeah um lore breakdown yeah so uh the world is this series, this vertical series of platforms with a single location on each. And then you go inside each location, like the building on each platform and, and click on stuff and talk to people. Um, it has a few mini games, which is what you're seeing in those screenshots. Uh, and each of them is like, there's like a racing game and a, a rhythm game and stuff like that. But the main focus is the plot critical mini game which is a uh, a team versus team arena collection shooter thing. It, it's pretty simple, but like you're just collecting fruits in the arena and bringing them to the center, and you're trying to temporarily kill the opponents and get more fruits by the end. It looks um, like that's a the fall game. Guys that... game mode. Yeah, I mean, actually, kind of. Whatever. I mean, like actually, the interface is even similar. Yeah, it is kind of reminiscent of that. And that's what the the characters in the game are playing. And that's what their kid lives are revolving around, getting to be the best team in that game. Because it's like the hot uh the hot property of them of this summer. Um and the whole game, you know, plays up its cuteness. It sort of reminds me of Animal Crossing tonally. Or at least, you know, just a just a slice of life sense to it. So it's nice. Uh, the, the, the games, the mini games are decently fun. Next one is a short hike. Uh, probably one of the more high short? profile ones here. Yeah. How short? That's what I want to do. Uh, uh, it was a couple hours long. Doesn't sound very short. Ooh, I'm digging the art style. Yeah. I like the art style. Well, I should say one thing. Uh, first of all, it's a top down 3d game. Uh, and one of the options is for like this pixel filter that it puts on the game for me i don't know if this applies to everybody but for me it started by default with the pixel setting to the max and i was like immediately turned off by the the pixelization so i turned it all the way down much better for my sensibilities i i really liked without oh, any yeah. pixels I, I i see the pixelation in the trailer it was harder to see when i was just looking at the screenshots and thumbnails but like up on the big screen i can definitely see what you mean in motion like yeah i think different people would have different tastes obviously but for me it's like a blur or like a bloom effect almost to my Mm -hmm. eyes without that it's just you know it's just a nice looking 3d game (laughs) i don't know why the pixel thing is felt to be necessary um but yeah so the game is about uh you're on you have come to a, a mountainous island and you're just exploring it and taking a hike basically to the top. And it's populated by animal people uh, who you can yeah. talk to. And, and uh, I mean, that sounds a little like Animal Crossing, but uh, it's, it's it's definitely doing its own thing. It's not that type of game, really. 
Uh, you can climb walls, which is cool, and you can uh, get upgrades to be able to climb farther, which, you know, grants you access to new areas. And since you're a bird, you can also glide, and you get, like, a double jump and sprinting and such. So you get you got options as the game goes along. Uh, yeah, it's very cute and actually pretty enjoyable to play. Um, I mean, it consists of going around, talking to people, climbing stuff collecting things, completing minor tasks for characters you meet, uh, all with the goal of, uh, you know, ultimate goal of reaching the peak of the central mountain. And it, there's like a very, very basic plot uh, that's not really relevant unless you want it to be. So, yeah, I, I recommend this one if you want a uh, just like a calming breath of air. It's not very long, as I said. It's just a couple hours. It's like a little, little vacation. This little this little island, and also no, I believe cool. it just got uh, an unofficial multiplayer mod, Yo, where you can see up to uh, up to ninety nine other players in the world. I don't think there's much Damn. to it, honestly. It sounds probably cooler than it is. That's a um, lot, but, but it's called a short I, like, hike ninety nine or something like that. Could me and Greg and John and Vito on stream together play it all together? That's a good question. I don't. I haven't looked into it enough. Yeah, we should look into that to see if it's like that. I don't know if that, it's like that really or if it's like um, you join like a server and whoever's there is there. And um, I don't know how it tracks, how it would track like tasks and stuff. Maybe everyone could still do their own thing. If so, that would be cool. Yeah, I don't, I'll have to look into that. But yeah, I recommend Short Hike in general. It's It's a good game. I'm watching like a small video on the multiplayer and they're like by the side of a mountain there and there's literally like hundreds of fishing lines just out in the water. So multiple. Huh. Mark, you were talking about Flask. It was actually intended to be like an April Fool's joke. Uh and it and okay. he's only keep, and he's only keeping the server up for two weeks. But um you he did say that he's gonna release the tools so you can uh host your own server if you'd like. Ah, okay. What, well, what I saw was an unofficial mod. So maybe someone else made something already? Well, apparently, I think the unofficial mod is made by a, one of the a developer. Yeah, yeah um, it says it's, it was made by the dev. Like, like okay. uh, you could even opt into it like on the beta Properties tab beta, yeah. All right. That's weird. People, I saw people talking about this mod, but I didn't see anybody talking about how it was a limited time thing. I think it's because right, well, he like officially said at some point it's unofficial mod because like he didn't put much time and effort into it and he's not expecting to like maintain it. All right. Well, maybe it'll you know something will come of that at some point. But even so, even still, I do recommend the game. The normal game. Uh, right. Next game is Rusty Lake Hotel. Uh, it's part of, I guess, like a series of Rusty Lake games. And this is a point-and-click game where I guess you're trying to uh, kill the anthropomorphic animal guests in a hotel one by one and serve them to the other guests. And I, I'm a little... He I, I, I say I guess because I didn't make it that far because the game did not feel good to play. And you might be... It might seem like a weird thing to say that a point and click game doesn't feel good to play, but it feels like a flash game. That's like the level it operates at in terms of presentation and control. Um, I don't know what it was about it. It just it, like I was immediately turned off by how it felt to to play. <laughs> Very bizarre. Which is which is too bad because I kind of like the. I don't know. the The idea that you're Sound, having to like yeah, it sounds fucking nutty. kill kill the guests one by one you, and feed them to the others. You've never played any of the other ones, or never are no. any of the other ones on the list of the games you got. This was my first foray into Rusty Lake. So yeah, I didn't get very far in that one. Um, That's a shame. Next game is Sagebrush which is a first-person narrative walk-around adventure type game. 
and you're exploring a an abandoned apocalypse cult compound in New Mexico. You're just you're just poking around, finding out what happened there. Um, pretty bog standard cult story. Like I've definitely seen stuff like this before. It goes for a, uh, a you know a foreboding atmosphere, but definitely not a scary one. Like it 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 creaks extensively, but nothing ever jumps out at you. You know what I mean? Um, I don't really like the graphics. It's going for like a PS One style, I guess. But what it actually just looks like is uh, poor modeling covered up with like a negative, <laughs> negative anti aliasing filter over it. So everything just looks like a blurry mess. Um, Rough. Yeah. Again, I. It's like if you can't pull off. Uh, this wasn't a problem with short, a short hike because a short hike you, you could turn it off. But for sagebrush and games like it, if you can't pull off like the full style of a PS One game, just putting jaggy filter over your existing models is not the answer. That's not the same thing. So it just looks blurry. But uh, you know, I played the whole thing just because I was it's fairly short and you know. I don't know why I did, because, it, again, it's not like there was anything to it, really. As I said, kind of a, a very standard cult storyline. Whatever. I'm sure anyone here could, Just like, the time if filler. they've seen a... Yeah, yeah. I'm sure anyone here could, like, guess the, the, the you know, who you are and, and what the plot is. Anyway, whatever. Uh, my last game to talk about right now is Minute, M-I-N-I-T. Which is probably the highest profile one on this list. What'd you say, John? I, I ain't never I heard like of it. I like the art. Yeah, yeah. The, art's the art is very nice. Uh, In-game, it is, like, pixelized. Uh, because it's definitely, um, like, an homage to the first Legend of Zelda game. So it's got that kind of fidelity level. Uh, I, I had heard of this one before. It's it's published by Devolver Digital, so it's a little bit you know a little bit step above, but it's a uh, it's a top down exploration adventure game, yeah. As I said, in the vein of the original Legend of Zelda, where you only have a minute to rove out into the world before you die and reset to your starting point again. So you just keep going out over and over again, trying to accomplish new things, and uh, certain things persist. Like uh, equipment you collect stays with you. So, like if you if you pick up the sword, you have the sword. Uh, and as you explore more parts of the world, you unlock new starting points. So it, you don't just always have to go from the very first house you start in. But it's it's fun. Uh, it's got really simple, uh, infrequent combat, kind kind of like the combat from the original Legend of Zelda. Just you know, just stabbing things in four directions. Um, but you get a little you know upgrades to that a little bit. And the puzzles are mostly just getting the right new tool to access a new path. You know, you get the you get the the skill upgrade that lets you cut down trees, and now you can cut down trees. That's about the level they're at. Uh, but it's the whole minute thing is a good little gimmick, and it's a it's a fun little game. All right, right on. Comments Before or questions. We no, no tone, but yet, huh? Mm-mm. Dude, if it only came in the itch.io bundles, surely I would have played. I, I actually have some more Halo questions, funny enough. Oh, do you? <laughs> I do. And in fact, I'm asking the whole group. Oh. If you scroll to the bottom of the docket, you'll see some new content there. All oh. right. All right. Who thinks the flood is going to appear in season one? Ah, uh, that would be the only reason I would watch that if it ends up uh, happening. I'm gonna say but no. But I doubt it. I'll just guess it will because I think it it could be like the um. I think they would want to use it as like a twist late in the season that there's another presence, uh, another threat. At most, I say Easter egg in the background. All right, definitely, Flask, you know. what episode or episode range if you feel more comfortable? There's no point, so it doesn't matter. 
How many there's supposed the to be? How many of the season? Ten? Let me see. Uh, one sec. Uh, somebody fill the air. Uh, oh, I like I like Halo. How is this? How Just many, kidding. How is this hard to find? I would assume like seven or ten, right? Between seven and ten. That's probably but pretty, that's just me. Pretty good estimate. I mean, it's usually how these hour long things go. Eight, yeah, eight, 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 each ten. episode's what? Yeah, an hour right. long. Nine episodes. Sorry, nine, nine okay. episodes. Oh, there you go. Then I would guess eight. I think it'll be a surprise, a shocking new thread in episode eight, and then they're not going to deal with it in the season. They're Obviously. not going to do anything with it. In, I'm going to go more mid season. Oh fuck! So? I don't know. That's a lot. No. I'm gonna go like last episode. Like we'll get a hint of it for the next season, maybe. Fall of Reach in season one. Uh, no. I'm also gonna say no. I yeah, think... I think the Fall of Reach will happen. Well, listen. I... Would they show that though? No, I'm gonna say no. Actually, I don't think they would show that. I have no faith that they're gonna build up like the war to a greater degree. That's I think they're yeah, gonna be I, I would stupid. say that. I would say no, but yeah, they if they do show it, it ain't gonna be like what it is. They would show like a, a watered down version of it. The, oh no, I don't think they're going to it in either competitive or way. But if it is, it'll be like oh no, Reach has fallen. You'll hear it over the radio yeah. or something. Reach is gone, <laughs> Mister President. Reach I think they're gonna fallen. be. I think they're gonna be bad enough at writing that they're gonna make it happen without sufficient like uh rising stakes so and and a feeling of tension i think i'm agreeing with flask that was kind of what i thought when i wrote that um flask do you think it'll happen in the last two episodes i would say so yeah i, I was i was kind of thinking that it'll be like it'll be like the the feeling for me let's let's say in my theoretical uh Flood does happen. Reach does fall. It'll be like the one-two punch of new threat of the flood, and also our home is gone. You know, like Reach is gone. Yeah. Uh, Pillar of Autumn season one. Okay, I that's think the ship. That's the I think... ship that Chief no. is. Yeah, that's the ship. I don't think any. Of I think gonna happen. I think Keys has to board his ship in this season. So I'm gonna say I, yes. I, I'm also saying yes, um, and I and I, and I'm going to go as far as to say I think it's going to crash on the Halo. I'll, I'll say yes to that too. It does. It does kind of make me laugh the idea that they're going to like make Keys board a ship and then immediately crash it. <laughs> he doesn't get to do anything cool. Like I, I can almost imagine like Chief is completely unaware. But like, there's going to be another plot line with the other Spartans. Like, for some reason, Chiefs on Halo, the other Spartans are, like, dealing with Reach. And Chief's unaware of what's happening with Reach until, like, he sees uh, the Pillar of Honor blind jump in and then crash. Just as for fan service. Actually, maybe. They did read the lore and they didn't play the game. So maybe they will have keys pull some sick maneuver or something and, and like, get the better of the Covenant. But it still leads to... Crashing on Halo or something like that. Halo is destroyed in season one. I'm going to say no. John? Uh, no, I don't think... I, I just, I, one, I feel like if all of these happen, wouldn't the timeline be very smushed, especially with like the things they're also trying to do? I'm like, yes. You're going to destroy a reach. You're also going to crash. You're also going to just flood. I don't think that any of these are going to happen. I think... Episode two is slow as fuck, and I think the rest of these are going to be slow too. And I think we'll see Halo. I don't think it's going to be destroyed. I, I and, and this is just you know wild speculation. I think they have higher hopes for this, and they want this to be a multi-season thing. I don't think they're going to wrap up anything in the first season. I also don't think the Halo is going to be destroyed in season one, but for like slightly different reasons than John. Because I think they will compress certain things that shouldn't be and decompress other things that 
should be more compressed. I mean, so I, I think they see that too. I think they're going to exactly what I was draw expecting. out the Halo past season one. Yeah. Yeah, I think that they would hope to like draw out the Halo across two seasons, and if and if by some grace of God they they make it further, I like go to Earth or something. Or go to other Halos. So do put me down for no as well. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, and that makes us all know on Clyde Mac scene where Chief escapes. Well, actually, I suppose that's still a yes. If we want to like say, is the last sequence for Chief going to be escaping from something about to explode? I I don't know how compatible this is with my flood expectation. Um. I'm gonna know. say no because they didn't read the didn't play the games. Yeah. Alright, yeah. Everybody's a no on that. Uh yeah. then just just finally, um any final episode predictions that aren't captured up above here? What Have they shown a do? brute yet? No. 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 Maybe they'll show brutes like right <laughs> at the end. That or like what are they what are those big things called? The uh the scarabs? Fucking have one of those in there. Hmm. And then that's like one of the badass moments is Chief blowing up a scarab. <laughs> I know it's just gonna be something stupid about his past. Like like maybe the, the penultimate episode, we, we we think we kinda know the whole story. And then at the very end they show you a little bit more of the, the vision. You're like, oh wait. Oh, the Covenant Queen is your mother, John. Yeah, exactly. John Halo. Yeah, I can see something like uh, a Forerunner uh, somehow interfaces with with John, with Master Chief, and, like, explains something about him. Something like that. Or maybe maybe your they'll make 3 4 John. Guilty Spark into more of an exposition machine for John for his past. Something like that. I don't really have anything that I feel confident about other than kind of what we've listed up here, like the flood appearing. Um, I guess if I were to say anything, no fucking way. Is uh, I mean, I could definitely see. Well, say say what you're writing down. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, I was writing down the Arbiter, like in, in the final f- episode, it's going to have like a big battle between the Arbiter and the Chief, or the Lady and the Chief, but I do think the Arbiter's going to be there. Has he would... shown up yet? The Arbiter? No, right? Or No, if... it's unclear. I thought, yeah, he. it's kind of a risky prediction, because he may or may not have been in the first episode. There was like a suspiciously good elite who escaped. Yeah, for all we, we haven't know, seen that him could since. Be... He he did appear later. He he was like uh uh reporting in to the province. Right, that's right. Yeah. I could definitely see Lady versus Chief happening sometime in in the season. I'm not sure if it'll be like the final episode or a bit before the final episode, but um yeah, maybe. The lady thinks that she's being the chief and then she gets eaten by the flood. <laughs> yeah, and the gray mind I, is just behind her, standing behind we're, her. We're long overdue for a break, but um, just quickly, does anybody have any miscellaneous predicts? It won't hmm. be great. I, 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 I don't, but... Yeah, it's going to suck. There's my prediction, dude. All right. Uh Quan Ha will save Master Chief's life at some point. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll I'll I'll, I'll ride myself <laughs> down. I'll, I'll piggyback on that. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> but I will I will in the event that we count points here, Flask will get we'll get the credit, of course. Okay. Well, just piggybacking. And with that, Flask, you're done, right? Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and move on into break. We're going to come back to discuss 
Some stuff with Greg. Maybe some anime updates. Maybe some Final Fantasy. I don't know. I don't um, know. It could be anything. Could be anything. And then we're going to discuss some video games with John. And wait, hang on. Is that John? Oh. John, a coworker today asked me about a, a TV show, and I had to tell her I hadn't seen it, but maybe you have. We'll find out. Based on the, the list, I think you frick? have. Yeah, I watch a lot of stuff, Andy. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll we'll see. be back. Just me, huh? All alone. That's all right. I'm used to it. Traveling these roads alone for a long time now. Just looking for a fire. I gather around. Get myself warm. And yet, as I travel, each mile I fall. <clears throat> all right, I'm back. Not but a broken campfire. What? And all my broken friends. Oh, I was I was lonely, Greg. I was talking to myself. Oh, okay. We're still on on camera, so don't talk to me like we're friends. All right. As the traveler said that, I wasn't surprised one bit. It's a lonely road, I said. And I travel moving on, trying to find yet another broken campfire to call home. Yeah, you're you're a traveler in that in that monologue. Hello, traveler. You want to play? You want to play a potion seller? That's that's kind of sure. a big thing these days. I'll play a potion seller. All right, all right. Uh, as I stumbled on the next broken campfire, I found myself in need of twisted spirits from a local apothecary. Hey, hey, I'll I'll take a health potion. You think you can come? Sorry, can you can you can you redo that, please? Uh, hey, I'll, I'll I'll take a health potion. You don't deserve my potion. <laughs> <laughs> I did not You're not powerful that. enough for my potion. You're weak. <laughs> <laughs> As I died laughing, I started wondering, maybe this ain't such a broken campfire after all. A little goblin, uh, or a little gnome potion seller. That was good. Welcome back, everybody, to the Broken Campfire Podcast. Greg, what have you been up to the Hello. last week or so? Well, I would talk about anime, but anime is not out yet. Only one thing has come out so far that I'm watching, and it's only the first episode. Uh, most of the stuff comes out, like, tomorrow and Saturday. Oh, wow, <clears> excuse time. me, but I will say, the one, I'm watch or the one I've watched so far is uh, the second season of S.H.I.E.L.D. Hero, and it looks very nice. They're doing the Spirit Turtle, which I'm excited for, because I like the Spirit Turtle art. Uh, but that's really it. I, can't, I don't have much for that. Uh... One Piece, I'm blowing through that. I cannot stop Hell watching yeah. that show. Dude, Welcome One aboard, Piece partner. is so One Piece is so great. I oh my god, I cannot stop watching that show. It's a daunting so, task to start. I get it, and it's you know it's only hard. It's a thousand episodes. You're like I'm never gonna finish it, but dude, it's a great show from start, and it only gets better as it goes on. Yeah, I'm at episode. I'm on episode. I'm almost done with uh, the first season. I'm uh, on episode fifty five right now. I'm like halfway through it before. Dude, you're we, making uh, great time. I would yeah. even say if you keep this pace up, and uh, uh, no doubt you will, you'll be caught up by the time uh, we get to the gamer mansion. Oh yeah, I that's what that's what hopefully I can I plan on doing. But uh, yeah, dude, it's fucking awesome. Dude, we hit one seventy uh, yesterday. Damn, one seventy. I'm like, all right. So yeah. And but, I, I mean, that took us like a what? We I think we've been doing it since like. January or December, so you know we've been doing it for, you know, and you've been going at it like a couple week. months. I yeah, can't wait well, until we get to the gamer mansion and restart. <laughs> That's gonna. Be I mean, I, my, I've only seen the first episode. 
Well, I told you, we'll have one dedicated Dude. room where we're going to play it at times four speed. <laughs> yeah. So everyone can go in there and get caught up. We'll have a diff couple different, the, like, latching. The one piece sensory room. <laughs> yeah. We are, and then once you get caught up, you can go with everybody else. These guys are definitely going to find a way to rig up uh, one piece with the hot tub. Oh, oh man. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I don't care how you guys it. do it, except it's not going to include my, my computer, I'll tell you that. I'm actually going to do some Harry Potter magic with your computer, and I'm going to have it play One Piece Through the Fire. And the I fire thought you bit. were going to say, you're going to, while you guys are in the hot tub, the water will be the screen, and it'll be playing One Piece. Oh, sh that's so you just oh look down, God. and it's One Piece. We, yeah, we rigged up like a um, projection screen, or projection camera. Oh. Shit. What, all we got to do is just sit in the hot tub, and everybody puts on an Oculus, and... <laughs> oh, dude, that ain't even a bad idea. <laughs> we just gotta when get Lu like when Luffy gets 12, uh, struck 12 by lightning Oculus in the one episode I just watched. Just just right, we drop the toaster in the oven. And, yeah. All right, this this is fun to discuss, but we, we should probably not talk a whole lot about the game. We're we're all going on a vacation in a couple of weeks, and we'll, we'll report back on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, remind me, oh. does One Piece have filler? The anime it does. It does. It, have, does. it does have filler. Okay. It had and are there recently with a uh, buggy, uh, the buggy the clown, who's like the, no, one of the pirate right. captains? Uh, it was showing what he was doing, and it was pretty. It was nice. I All I right. couldn't complain. I got a question, an honest yeah. question for a man like John. There's a thousand episodes. Yeah. What percentage of that, just just rough, is filler? Now, see that I actually would have no idea. Because well, because one, I mean, unless you're like reading the manga along with it, like some of it flows together so well, you're like, oh, I, I had no idea. Like, like some like cool stuff. You're like, oh, I had no idea that was filler. Sometimes they do that just because, like, you know, the manga comes out before, and you know, they have certain ideas or whatever, and like, oh, maybe we want to insert this, or maybe we want to foreshadow this. Uh, okay, well, I mean, it, it's filler is not bad if it's cool filler, I guess. But I would say, well, I'll put I'll put it I'll put it this way. Uh, typical filler arc so far that we've and we're on episode 170 typical filler arc maybe is like four at the most like six episodes and the arc we're on now which admittedly is a long one it's one of the longer ones uh skypia it's like a main arc it's 70 episodes so, i oh, mean man. normally you're going to get like a huge arc and then yeah maybe you'll get like something small in between like when they're building up to the next arc That's cool. uh, Greg, Greg, you said you just you, you seen you struck by lightning, so you're in uh, what Lose yeah. Town, Lose Town. Uh, right now they uh, where I paused it, they were in the uh, they just got to uh, Warship Island. Okay, where okay. By the uh, the calm sea, they found that one girl. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. All right, yeah, they, uh, they, they just uh, they passed they passed Luge Island. Yeah, dude. Uh, that, well, uh, two things. One, Usopp is my favorite character, I think. Uh, he <laughs> Usopp's is, pretty solid. Every time he acts like a little bitch, he immediately is like, like, someone calls him out, and he immediately is like, alright, hunt off. He does. And he's, you're uh, right, I, I you're like right. his voice actor a lot. He has just, uh, yeah. he's, got, he's good at just getting those quick little lines in. Yeah, I think he's very good. But, uh, dude, that, uh, the Navy captain, uh, Smoke. Smoker? Captain Smoke. Dude, Smoker's cool. that is so cool. I'm uh I'm I'm excited to have to watch more. Yeah, he's like right. he's that dude who stopped him, Craig. Who was that guy? Uh, Why do you do it? Why do you do dragon? it? Dragon? I do it. Who the fuck knows? Find he showed up. He episodes. showed up. Made the uh, turned all the wind on. Turned on the wind machine. The <laughs> green wind. The wind. And I was like, oh my god. But it was cool. It was all cool. I do like I. I I'm glad. Uh, what's her name showed up? The. The fat lady pirate, uh, Alvita. Oh, yeah, she's all like yeah. skinny because she ate the fruit. But her and Buggy teaming up, I think, super funny because uh, especially when she takes off her shoes and starts uh, sliding on the ground, and Buggy <laughs> takes himself apart and becomes like a go kart. I just, I don't know why I thought that was super funny. Man, dude, Buggy. Any any time they get Buggy in there, it's gonna be dude. Good, I love good Buggy. Time. Buggy's great. So Greg, this is, your, it. this is your first exposure overall to One Piece. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And was, John, this watch through, was this your first exposure, or did you already know Oh, something? no, no, no. So, I mean, I, I watched One Piece when it was, like, aired on Toonami, but, you know, that was right. kind of like the, I don't know, I mean, half four kids, a lot of the dub, and it didn't even go past, like, the first, like, 100 episodes. Um, when I moved out to Boston a few years ago, my roommate, 
he was up to date on One Piece. Like he had been watching for the past like twenty years. So that's when I started over with him, and we just we just watched One Piece when we got home from work. Wait, were you the person I talked to on a previous podcast episode about where I was or what I had left off? Uh, pro- probably. Probably you would be the one who has yeah. been through One Piece. Well, so, yeah, yeah. Well, what was it? Because I probably wasn't as, as versed in the the piece as I am now because it took a while to watch. I didn't do it Greg style. I think I eventually found out that I was like at the uh, uh, definitely before the the whole whatever the big mom the whole cake island or whatever. I had not oh, seen okay. that well, or I had not read that in the manga. Whatever was seen before that, parts I think. Of Big Mom. Um, or uh, I've seen uh, parts of those Dress hours. Rosa. That's like the longest arc in the, the series. Yeah, I so think far. Dress That's Rosa. Over 100 episode. I either yeah. had had like that was the last thing I finished, or I had been partway through there, something like that. Oh, yeah. And when, I, like, when I stopped reading the manga, I mean, you'd be on like episode, I don't know, six or six hundred something. Yeah, seven hundred something. If you're watching the the anime, somewhere around there. I love that manga. <laughs> I, I, I've told this before on the podcast, but I'm definitely going to read it at some point. Well, I hope I, it eventually finishes so that I can like just know that, I'm, that I'll have an ending to get to. Fly, no fly no spoilers right now, but I will say what's going on right now is probably the, the biggest mix-up that has happened in like the 25 years. It's been oh, yeah. On. I saw like something about way, that. Though. People were Not like a little like a, unsure how they felt about on. it. Yeah. They were like, some people were like upset about some development. I was yeah. initially when I very first heard, I was like, that's kind of, that's kind of dumb. But then you look, you go back and I mean, all the foreshadowing was there. It all makes sense. All right. Well, I'm kind of it's excited there. for that then <laughs> to see the mix up. That's good. That's one piece. Everyone one piece. loves one piece. <laughs> one piece. One piece. Uh, one piece. That's all for like things I've been watching. Uh, World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy, my second and third jobs I've been playing. Uh, yep. World of Warcraft has, my game, my playing of that has diminished greatly where I only do like three things and I get off every day. I'm like, dude, I don't want to do this anymore. But I will say the thing, three things that I do are pretty dang fun. I like, uh, I kind of like the what's the last area I talked about last time. But I don't want to get too into it because I don't want to get that game. I'm I'm done. I'm done talking about it until <laughs> the next expansion gets announced. Understood. Uh, and other than that, for game, uh, me and Oxel, uh, oh, well, I bought it uh Tuesday and we played like three, two, three hours of it. Uh, that new Lego Star Wars game, the Skywalker Saga. Okay, so uh, what is that? So it, it's a. Like a Lego Star Wars game, but it's all the Star Wars movies, like one, two, three, four, five, all all nine of them. But is it so? It's a remaster of the existing Star Wars. No, 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 dude, no. This is like their open world now. It's crazy. Yeah, this is like a whole fucking. Have you? All right, real quick. Has any of you have any of you played a Lego game before? Like in the past, I I played played the original Lego Star Star Wars games. Yes. Uh, literally nothing like that. It is a, it's so fun. It's a, uh, you, there's like a bunch of, you can go to like all these different planets flask. Like you Whoa. can travel to like Tatooine fucking, um, oh, fucking Tatooine. I'm in. Uh, but yeah, there's like a giant map you need to explore. You can unlock like a boss. Well, in terms of, of, yeah. Well, in terms of gameplay, I mean, and, and like unlocking, you know, the characters has kind of, you know, similar, but yeah, it's not, you're not like picking like, Oh, I want to play episode one like first part or whatever it's like yeah it's just i was just watching them play it's like a big open world and they were going to different areas and just doing different missions like in the open world to unlock characters dude me and noxo would literally go to an area and we would just i wouldn't see him for like 20 minutes because we would be doing our own thing (laughs) in the section of the that that was cool too they weren't tied to each other and there was and there's like just fun little like mini like uh, the one I watched, uh, <laughs> he walked. In, no, no, no. Nox was like walking around, and it it, it did a little cutscene for him where it showed like a a creepy looking droid staring at him, and then he like ran away, and he followed it into like a building, and then it was like you know another little creepy stare down, and then it ran away. And it was just a little side mission where he found a dead droid, and it was it was called Ghost Protocol, and he just got like a little <laughs> block for doing got a little it. brick for it. It was just it was just like little stuff like that was scattered. There was one too. I found. 
and it was like a basketball dunking contest and he was uh i think he was jar jar oh. and i was uh <laughs> i was i was uh, qui-gon i literally the game started i just kept force pushing the ball i like kept grabbing them and just dr- dunking them in and he literally couldn't do anything about it it was so fucking funny so he was using the force he had to just keep dunking the ball and jar jar <laughs> he did not have that ability and he could not figure out how to like grab the ball <laughs> he just getting fucking dunked on I, my brain is having uh, trouble processing what you just... Did you say that Qui-Gon Jinn and Jar Jar Binks are having a basketball match? Yeah, Flask, I mean, if you're interested, I'm fine with playing it again. I, I can't go any further than a certain part, because uh, it's locked by story, but if you want to check it out, uh, now, I don't mind showing it to you. When you were saying that, that you and Knoxville were, like, apart for 20 minutes do, experiencing different stuff, does that mean that you were unable to experience certain things that he was doing? Like well, like he was experiencing. Well, it is. I mean, yeah, technically, but it is. Were. It is split screen, so I I was just seeing. I could literally see what he was doing on oh, the okay. right side of my screen. But like, if I didn't notice, I would have not known what the hell is going on. Well, but he's saying it's more so because you guys like chose to split up and just check different things out. The game didn't force you in separate ways, right? No, uh-huh. yeah, 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 no, 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 no. We we just went out and did our own thing. So I was gonna say if it's if it's the type of game that like I would just miss out on content because my partner was doing it somewhere else, then that sounds like a game that I would play alone like a sad asshole and well, just like do, so do everything. I, I should really say the things that we you do alone are wander around the cities and cl- do like little puzzles to unlock uh the bricks which you use to like upgrade or you yeah. get like a hint to unlock a character. It's nothing like crazy like story related. Okay, so that much is like the same as the old Lego Star Wars yeah. games. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh uh, yeah, I mean it, it looked pretty cool, dude. It is super cool. It's I got like I think I got it for like forty bucks, which was not bad. Uh yeah, like we did. I think like I said, we did three hours of it, and we just got off of um, we just got Kid Anakin, and we just got to like the Senate, and that was like the last thing we got. Like literally halfway through the movie in two hours or three hours. So the episode one, of Phantom Menace, that yes. you're talking about. Yeah, you're, you're following the movie sequentially then. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I wanted to do it chronologically because I mean, okay. like everyone knows, I like uh, I like the separatists. I think the robots are cool. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so we'll go for that, and then we'll just go from now, there. Does this include? Cause I did see uh, you could play as Mandalorian characters. Does this include like uh, extra Star Wars stuff? Like you get to play I do like, have the Mandalorian story? I do have. Story? Uh, no, I have DLC packs that like give you uh like I have okay, three characters. DLC packs mm-hmm. right now. Uh I have the solo uh one which gives me characters from Star Wars uh solo whatever and then oh, the thank Mandalorian God. season 1 character pack. <clears throat> okay. Flask, are you well, considering this game? Uh it definitely piqued my interest in the way it's being described here. I mean, oh man, yeah, if you want to try it, um we can try I'm it. I'm also later. interested. We just we can uh we can play it. Yeah, it's fun. Um, that's really how, all I wait, have how, for that. What? I mean, how many players is it? It's just two players, right? It's just us two, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, that is, um, that's like with Star Wars. I'm sure I'll have more to talk about that when we get further into it. Um, and I've only been playing one other game. I started playing Project Zomboid again. I, uh, did you? I downloaded a bunch of, uh, mods to uh like mess with the game like i uh i added like a bunch of weapon mods uh armor mods uh you can like walk around and or you can um like sleep on stuff and sit around on tables and stuff it's i added a bunch of like weird things to like expand uh the basic stuff for the game i uh made got this uh <clears throat> excuse me this one event that expands all the helicopter events that happen where like um one thing that can happen is helicopters will show up and they uh, can either like drop supplies off or they can shoot at you if they uh if they're like bad guys. It's pretty cool. I so I've been doing that uh I'll do that for like a few hours every day where I just get on, I'll go look around for stuff. And it's a lot of fun. It's nice. Just messing around. All right. Right on. I have a I have the zombies on sprint, so it automatically it gets insane really quickly. Where I can't really carry a lot of stuff or be heavy because just a shit ton of zombies will f- see me and sprint at me. And then if I get bit, I'm like immediately dead. So rage zombies. 
Yeah, basically I'm playing like 28 days later. Mm. <laughs> that's cool though. Uh yeah, and that's that's really it. I've just been kind of doing that and watching One Piece. All nice. right. One Piece. One dream Piece. Dream. Uh yeah, I, I've dreamed it. That's the name of the before treasure move on, line. Uh Flask, I just want to say before I forget, if you end up wanting to play that game co-op, I'll go have these on it. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Consider it. Um, moving on to John. Round us out on the round table. Yeah, I see Vito's playing Kroll. What yeah, the like, fuck? I did see that. I noticed he's, that. He's and probably uh, doing work for the next... He's going to tell us about the game next week. I do know, he's, a little bit. Of, he's playing a game Crawl for 18 minutes. I do not accept that explanation, John. I I don't have any other ones. I don't know. Even if you. even He's if he was right now playing a game with a potential client to get them interested in his business, I would still say that's not okay. <laughs> it's too close. Yeah. I agreed. Agreed. All right, but enough about what Vito's playing. What about, what have I been playing? You know, actually, fuck Vito because I was going to talk about Cuphead, or I was expecting him oh. to. That was one of my topics. So we'll just we'll just fucking scratch that one right off the list. Vito was a poop head. Thanks, Vito. Fuck it. Um, did we t- we didn't talk about uh, Midnight Ghost Hunt last week, did we? we did oh not. fuck! No. We did not. I no, forgot about that. We played Midnight Ghost Hunt. This is the it's early access, right? This is probably yeah, my favorite game right now that I'm not playing much. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, early access. They actually had a patch come out today. I'm gonna check that out. Um, and it's a it's a prop hunt game with a little bit of a twist on it. Uh, so, you know, they're split into two teams. You have the hunters and the ghosts, like normal. Um, however, the ghosts, you know, they can possess different items, and they have the ability to actually hurt the hunters uh, and potentially kill them. Uh, and the hunters are hunting down the ghosts. You have, is it like five minutes when you start the match? It's not uh, that long. Yeah, I think, Three I minutes? Think it's five minutes. I think it's like yeah. five minutes? Yeah, five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. So you have five minutes to the hunters five. to try and find all the ghosts. Uh, if you don't, by the end of the five minutes, like midnight hits, and the ghosts get fucking jacked up, and uh, they try and kill the hunters, and the hunters have to survive a little bit longer, and then they get away. Um, but it's a good dynamic. It's a good change up from the the typical, in my opinion, it's a good change up from the typical yeah. pop hunt. Because uh, I agree. Yeah, yeah a lot um, of times, you know, a, a big one we played with Witch it, and you know, we we would get a big group together, ten plus people playing, and you know, you'd have somebody who would just like float in like a corner of the map that I didn't even know that you could get to because I only play the game when we play with each other and then just not move for 20 minutes um, which is actually, there's a mechanic in this that your ghost builds up and releases ectoplasm um, if you're not moving you, you actually can't uh, just camp a location and hang out there oh no, yeah. he's talking about me I'm talking about multiple people it ain't just, well I mean if it is you it ain't just you there's at least I mean, three I was. Names I always felt mind. like I was pretty good at finding. Like I didn't play any more than anybody else. I just was really good at finding, like corners and spaces where I could just hide for the entire. Well, and, and, and ultimately, that's not really your fault. I mean, the game let you do. Well, that. yeah, and that's the and thing. Like, yeah, and it incentivize you to do that. Like, yes. In this game, yeah. like they thought about it and they're like, okay, well, how can we get around that? Okay, you know, there's a meter that builds up when you stand still, it will force you to move, uh, and it works. Exactly. So yeah. There's a lot of like little subtle things that force you to move. Um, make it a little bit easier to escape when you fight back. Like it, it feels much more like a constant push pull between the two sides than it does. Like, all right, you found your spot. Uh, you can alt tab for ten minutes. So that explains why Greg didn't just live the rest of his life as a dinosaur. And, yeah. and also, like True. the fact, yeah. like if you die, if you die as a ghost, uh, you get caught. You only got to wait a few minutes because either the match is going to end because everybody got caught. Or when the timer hits to zero, uh, you come back. If yeah, yeah. So at the most, you're hanging on for five, maybe six minutes if you get fucked yeah. you know, right away. And there's stuff you can do when you're dead. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and like you have abilities. Yeah, very, very faint, kind of like, uh, you know, the first one you start off with is so you can chill kind of um, an area around you, but later you can unlock one just like, uh, you know, push objects. You can try to distract the hunters that are going after yeah. your buddies. 
I think some of the ones you can unlock, like maybe you confuse some of their sensors sometimes, that kind of thing. So like little little like minor harassment things, but like just you you have more to do than just spectate. Yeah. Um Yeah, I'm digging it. Like I'm not a huge PvP guy and I'm not a huge prop hunt guy, but I think this is and I, this isn't a game. I mean, I have what, eighty eight minutes on it. Danny's got ten hours already. Not already. You can do that in a day, but he's well, he was time. talking yeah, about this I game before. He has he, like, he's, he's been looking for this early was, access period. Yeah. Um, he was playing with some other friends too. He was telling me about it. But it was yeah, yeah. So I, I could I could see playing this game, you know, down the line and as it gets patches. Uh, I mean, it's not like exactly my game, but it's enough. And I think both of these quadrants, I think this is a cool crossover. I I will say I was like generally. I bought it because, like, whatever. We haven't had a good group game in a while, and it yeah, it checked it checked enough of the boxes. Uh, but I, I have been pleasantly surprised at the experience I've been having. I've been having more fun than I've been expecting going into it. We did. Um, we had one run that was. Uh, I mean, we semi planned it, but we could not have planned it as well as it went. The uh, fucking skelly round. Well, no, the skelly dude, round was cool, but no, when we let those guys into that hole and they instantly lost. Oh, dude! I mean, the, was, the round that, was actually over within. Uh, maybe 30 seconds that was amazing so like yeah me and danny both had different ghost trap abilities and danny had this idea of synergizing them together so we f found a good spot like down this hole and his ability basically uh reacted when people or his ability reacted when people were near and my ability turned objects into flying objects that like could could fly at people if they shot it, something like that. So I turned a bunch of barrels, which are heavy items, in. Their whole team dropped down at the same time, and all the traps triggered, and all the barrels came and like killed almost all of them immediately. And then we just mopped up the last guy. It was great. Hmm. It was it was pretty good. It was fun. And then yeah, we did have a round where three of us turned into. You can possess so certain objects you can possess have attacks actually built into them. Like you can get like a knight statue and it'll swing like a sword. Um, we were in the school level and three of us possessed like, uh, anatomy skeletons. They can like smack and do, yeah. we just, we just charged the room and just beat the fuck out of them. <laughs> that was, that was just straight embarrassing for them. Like that, that just, that had to hurt. That almost happened to us, but we put them down. It was for a different sure. match though. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun game. Yeah. Early solid game. I end up patches. playing more. Yeah. Um, on that note, um, compared to like say Widget, which uh, I, I did really like, I think it's a good game, is also not like a whole lot higher than like a Gary's mod, Source mod type derivative product. I felt like Midnight Ghost Hunt's production value was like substantially higher than I expected. Really good assets. Yeah, it looks nice. Um, plays nice. Like uh, uh, menus have nice quality of life features. You know, it's got all the PC bells and whistles that you want. Uh, in your menus, like, uh, very, very cool. This is I'm not surprised because it's been in beta for a long time. Yeah, I, I, I've heard Danny talk about it extensively, but I just didn't realize, like, how complete it was. You know, you, you, go, you hear about a prop hunt, you expect a Gary's Mod thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is the developer's first game, but it is published by uh, Coffee Stain, which is, you know, the Deep Rock and Valheim right, and... Right. Uh, other games so you know they, they seem to have like a high bar for quality yeah all right john what else you got uh not too much else just to just slap it off to end it um you know me and your like color an we're skeleton. talking oh and we both watch moon knight oh the newest disney play oh, actually you know, i got two things to say i'll talk about moon knight and i got a very small thing to add this is the newest Disney Plus series. Oh, this is Moon Knight. I don't know too much about him as a character. I know he's... No, actually, I really don't. Uh, so he's like Crazy show, Batman. Yeah, yeah, a little, a little bit. I was going to say, I know he has like multiple personalities and like he uses weapons. That's just pretty much it. Uh, that's what I know, at least. Um, but yeah, we're two episodes in. I don't know how many they're going to be, but so far, I think they've been two pretty solid episodes. Um... You, it's, uh, it takes place, uh, I, I didn't know this, Moon Knight's kind of like uh, an Egyptian type of, or he gets his powers from like Egyptian gods. The Moon God Khonshu. Yeah, there you go. 
Um, so yeah, I don't want to like go through like the whole you know scene by scene and like spoil it because I think it'd be cooler to watch, especially for Flask. Uh, you know, see, he digs his stuff. Um, I will watch it. Yeah, some point. Yeah, I, I really I came into it blind, almost expecting nothing, and I thought that uh, I don't know the way they're doing it or the the angle they're going with is uh, I don't know it works. How is Oscar Isaac in the role? You know what? I'm so glad you said that because I was. You may have noticed I was just spewing out words. I was trying to remember his name desperately, <laughs> uh, and I couldn't. He's good. I like him a lot. You know, because this character has multiple personalities. You know, he's playing. You know, or he's he's you know he's doing different people. He's playing different you know uh, people. You know, in, in the same body, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but I think he does it uh, tremendously. I think he does a great job. Uh, you I know, didn't I, know that the bad guy's but, Kevin Bacon. I didn't uh, remember that. He either. didn't do anything crazy to impress me yet. He's just there. That's fine. Well, that's actually pretty funny because what I was just going to say is I was almost going to say before, you know, I like Oscar Isaac and pretty much everything I see him in, but he hasn't d- really done a role like this before until I remembered that he played Apocalypse in the X-Men movies, which did I completely really? forgot. He did. Yeah. yeah he was under I mean, all that I makeup. I didn't watch those because I kind of wrote off the X-Men movies. Uh, Apocalypse you know? was not a good movie. Uh, he yeah. wasn't bad or in it or anything like that. He was fine in the role. It was just a bad movie. Um, but oh. I just for completely forgot blanked that he played that role. And Kevin Bacon played the villain in the first of the first class movies, the first of that trilogy of oh, X Men. All right, so, all right, huh? Huh? A little, little tidbits. Uh, but yeah, I think he does great in both roles. Um, I mean, it's Disney Plus, so I mean the CG, you know, the effects. And just as good as the movie stuff. It's so crazy that they can just... I mean, I know it's Disney and they have infinite money. But just <laughs> comparing that to like... I don't know. Amazon's got fucking infinite money. Or, no, Amazon's not. Who's in charge of Halo? Paramount? I guess Paramount. they have infinite money. I don't know. It just looks no. so much fucking worse. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, like I said, what are you going to do? Um, yeah, I, I give this one a recommend. I I, I want to wait till Flash watches the first couple episodes to... Talk about the little things and stuff, but mm-hmm. but so far I give it thumbs up. Cool. All right. Cool. Moon Knight. Moon Knight. Um, that's all you got, John? Yeah, I reckon that's that's about it. Wait, you said there was more. Vito's not here to talk about fucking Cuphead. Oh yeah, yeah, I did have one last thing. Uh, they added the um Netflix like Daredevil, Punisher, Jessica Jones. They added those to Disney Plus. Oh yeah, uh, right. As far as I know, they are unedited. However, I, I did, when I logged on to my Disney Plus, it prompted me, it said, hey, we've added some uh, more mature content. If you would like to view this, you have to go into your settings and actually change what content you're allowed to see. And by <laughs> default, it's actually just on like PG or P- no, PG-13, I guess. I had to set it to like, uh, I don't know, 17 or whatever to, to access the, the Netflix Marvel shows. Okay. It's just, that, it's that, just a little thing. Yeah. That reminded me. Did you guys see that thing about uh, the Jet Li movie Kiss of the Dragon that happened recently? Uh, I, you know, no. I remember it being announced. What or, is it? I remember it seeing a title or something. Is that like the first So there were articles. Movie? There, yeah, there were articles okay. like a week ago or so that were like, oh, Disney Plus is getting its first R rated movie in the form of like. The I don't know 2000 or 2001 movie Kiss of the Dragon starring Jet Li, which is <laughs> such a bizarre choice. Yeah, uh, it was, it was a strange one. But it turns out more recently there were articles about uh, it's not actually coming to U.S. Uh, Disney Plus at all. It's coming to Canada Disney Plus. <laughs> so so Disney Plus U.S. does not get its first R-rated movie from Jet Li. Unfortunately, oh. who knows what it will be? It's still a mystery. We shall see. Yes. Hypnospace Outlaw is getting not one, but two sequels this year. This sounds like news. Oh, fuck. Did we forget the news? News, 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 news. And not only does this sound like news, this sounds like great news. It does sound like great news. So we have the first game is Dream Settler, which promises to... uh, be a package in a format very familiar to people who like Hypnospace Space Outlaw, where you're navigating um, the internet for videos, uh, websites, searching files to unsolve, solve mysteries and discover clues. Except 
twist here is that whereas Hypnospace was more of a 90s internet, this is more of an early 2000s internet, which I suppose promises to be more directly nostalgic for us, though I still like yeah. the 90s internet a lot. Uh, it is, but the so, 2000s yeah. is just when we all kind of got into it, so yeah, that is neat. <laughs> the first thing I thought when I saw that is there's totally going to be a uh, a mechanic around downloading something off LimeWire. <laughs> Surely there will be. Maybe there'll be like a site where you can watch stupid videos, and it's like the earliest stages of that kind of thing happening, yeah. or like a like a like a Zhao Zhao type uh, mini game site or something like that. Yeah. Um. Whereas, uh, Slayers X is the other game that was announced, and which you play as a character. Uh, from the original, you guys might remember him as Zane Lofton. Uh, oh, yeah. the wrist guy. Yeah, followers of the stream will definitely remember him. Oh, and a Doom-esque first-person shooter <laughs> retains the wacky style of Hypnospace. Alright. Set in 2022, Lofton is now 37 is re-releasing a game he made when he was 14. <laughs> in it, he must take down the Psycho Syndicate in a fourth-wall breaking adventure to the point where the fictional developer has a real Twitter account. Yeah, okay. all right. I'm 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 there for it. Yeah, both these games sound cool. Yeah, Dream Dream Settler, at least like the the concept of it was uh mentioned, I believe, in in Hypnospace. But just just to uh remind everybody, Hypnospace Outlaw is a great game. I recommend it to anybody. It it it's uh yeah, it was one of my favorite games of that year. I got to finish it. I got well, I probably just got to restart at this point, but yeah, I got to play it. Mhm. Uh, yeah, for sure. In other news, Bandai Namco uh, ha has announced an well, there's indication that Bandai Namco wants to work with Brandon Sanderson on adapting a, well, on a pitch for a Soulsborne like game. Brandon Sanderson, as some of you may remember, is the author of uh, Mistborn. And Stormlight Archive, among other fantasy novels, were those are his most notable. The whole Cosmere see, universe. Let me, let me bump in here because I'm a little, uh, <laughs> a little ignorant on the fantasy genre because dragons are fucking lame. <laughs> sure. Is this guy big? Is this guy a big name? You're lame. Yeah. So he, I, I would say he's probably the second most well-known fantasy author today, behind George R. R. Martin. The name uh, sounds familiar. I feel like I've watched. He 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 is very YouTube, well respected, like a, like a writing shop by him right. or something. Right. He uh, he was... does he does streams and stuff. This is actually how he was a uh, he was uh, or how we found out about this is that he like live unboxed the letter of intent from Bandai Namco like on the stream. Um. Don't forget, he also did uh, finish the Wheel of Time series after Robert Jordan yes. passed. Yeah, he did do that. I have not it, read. And I don't know much, what it's about. I've not read much of his stuff, but the gist is for for those of you who don't know or don't care is that Brandon Sanderson is most respected, I think, for how well he manages magic systems. He has a lot of creativity yeah. without coming up with like uh, different okay. different ways that magic arises and interacts with each other. And like, you know, like uh, I think one of his stories is about like God. I don't like. I don't even want to just. I don't even want. I don't know. There's 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 weird stuff. I'm not gonna describe it because I don't really know it very well. But that that is his place in the pantheon. Get down with that. I still need to read the, his work. <laughs> I haven't read anything by him. Um, I I did enjoy some comments that Sanderson made about Elden Ring. Um, he wasn't he wasn't talking about derisively about the game at all. But he said that uh, when he heard about Elden Ring, uh, he said. Most of these requests go to the agency says that sometimes they pop up for me, but let me be salty. From From Software decides to make a fantasy game and partner with a fantasy novelist, right? And they choose someone who spends his days blogging about the NFL, rather than the person who has played their games since Kingsfield, and has listed the games among his top ten consistently over time? What are you thinking, people? If you don't know, they went to George and made a game with George, and I'm like, George doesn't play video games. George has no idea. So anyway, there you go. It is interesting because that sounds like if, if anyone else was saying that other than him, anyone like l lower tier author in the fantasy uh, sphere, I would say that they're just being like conceited 
and egotistical and everything like that. Yeah, but but, but he's he like the he has the clout yeah. and like he's at George's level, so I can kind of see where he's coming from. <laughs> that they that they somehow got involved with George, and he's like, why did that happen? You know? Yeah, and George is just a bigger name because of Game of Thrones. I mean, I mean and I'm sure it's a little right- tongue in cheek, you know. Yeah, but I I imagine the frustration because like apparently he does literally write online like reviews and stuff like that. And has, <laughs> has like reviewed Bloodborne and shit like that. Like, come yeah. on. <laughs> um, if I might have lost it in the middle of all that, but he did, you know, that was that was all tongue in cheek, of course. But he did, of course, say that he has a Soulsborne pitch. He's uh, intending on working with him. Hmm. So watch for that in five years. Okay, I will. All right. State of the case studio Undead Lab has been faced with allegations of sexism and bullying. Come on now. Uh, yeah, no one just... can really keep it together nowadays, can they? All around doo-doo culture, it seems. Um, but this is uh, speculation. This may have been the reason, you know, we've seen a trailer, or not even a trailer, we've seen like a cinematic trailer mm-hmm. for State of Decay 3 uh, like a year? Two two years ago? A year and a half ago? Yeah, it's, dude, like two years yeah, ago. It's some game show, and then we had heard nothing since. Uh, you know, speculation that there's just turmoil going on in the studio, and they're just not working very well. Um, which, which would, I mean, it kind of makes sense. It's kind of weird they showed that, and just kind of disappeared. Um, it's a bummer. I, I I like those games a lot, and I, I had I had hopes for the the third one. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You never want to hear about stuff like this. Uh, it sucks. Yeah, for sure. So poo on you, Undead Labs. Uh, I guess it seems like what happened is that, like the one studio had left and another replaced him, and then it was like the culture was much worse after that, just because this guy was like. L- Leading, yeah, yeah. No kidding, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, uh, good guy Activision here. I'm going to convert all my QA testers to full time employees with full benefits, and I'm going to make sure that everybody's getting paid at least twenty dollars an hour. Well, there they go, they're back, baby. I, mean, I that told you, the, sick if that's... the kings cannot be down forever. That's real, uh, I guess. Well, hang on a second. Uh, that that offer actually doesn't apply to the Raven Software quality assurance workers because they've organized <laughs> under the Game Workers Alliance. Uh, if only if only they hadn't <laughs> formed a union, then perhaps they too could have partaken in these wonderful benefits that were doling on to you, company men. Dang. Hey, unions are great. Dang. Everyone loves unions. Everyone should love unions, and that's not a meme. All right, yeah, so you actually got me. It's funny. I really didn't read the one below it. So, I, you know, obviously I was skeptical. I was like, what are, what are they really doing here? And then there you go. <laughs> you set me up. Uh, nice. I, I'm glad because that, that does perfectly capture the feeling I had reading this. I was like, wow, that, finally some, some cool change. And then uh, I think it was like a couple hours later when I looked again. Uh, it was when people had dug into the details and found the union busting angle. This sounds. Heads. This also sounds fake. But I, when I saw the the headline of the first story, I didn't even read it because I was like waiting for the follow, <laughs> waiting for the other shoe to drop. Just waiting. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Well, let's end on a interesting note. I think this 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 uh this one really gets to the duality of man for me here. Uh, Remedy's teams are really maxed out and Rockstar is just further added to the pain with the upcoming remake or something of Max Payne 1 and 2. Well, I've never the played one and any of the two. Max Payne games. Oh, really? Did I play Max Payne 3? Max Payne 3 was oh, man. awesome. I bought Max Payne 3 when it came out and I had some weird fucked up problem with like my social club connecting to like Steam or something and it, it just straight up wouldn't let me play it and I said fuck this and i never i literally have never thought about the series again in my head but yeah i never dog, played the first two dog i i bought the first two on like steam many years back for like less than five but you got to play like specifically you do like i feel like uh the aesthetic is i feel like the aesthetic is very john to oh me. you know actually hold on i have i just unlocked a hidden memory when, when did those games come out or early to mid 2000s like 2002 2005 maybe somewhere around there 
but that might be, even be a little late. All right, that, that makes sense. All right, I remember it's just, I was in high school at this point, so the games had to have been out. Yeah, I was in high school. I think I already knew you guys. We were playing on like the 360 or something, and those games were on like the PS2, right? Yeah. My, were, yes. my uncle called me. It's an uncle I talked to maybe like once a year, you know, at Christmas. He called me, and I could already tell he'd been drinking. He was like, hey, John, you play games? You, you ever heard of this Max Payne series? And he started, he's like, I think I'm going to get it, but I don't know, they could be too mature for you. <laughs> and at this time, I was like a, like, a, like a junior, and I was like, all right, man. He never did get it. He never, I, I literally, I didn't hear from him until like Christmas, and they just never brought it up. Oh, it was so, really it was so cool. strange that I, I'll never me and forget you both have Me and you both have a little bit of healing to do, John. Here's what you'll, <laughs> you'll play a little bit of Max Payne 1, and I'll play a little bit of Golden Sun 1, and then you'll play a little bit of Max Payne 2, and I'll play a little bit of Golden yeah, Sun Yeah, here's the thing. I didn't, like, as he called me, like, I, you know, at that time, you know, it was probably closer when it came out. I knew the game was old. I knew it was on the PS2. So in my head, I was like, what the fuck is he talking about, dude? Like, I, just, I was just going along with him, so... So, you know, I don't know I, if I need the healing, but if you guys say they're good. I mean, I've heard great things about them. I, I, I didn't know they were on Steam. Like six or seven years ago, mind you. But I remember at the time feeling like they still held up pretty well. So I, I imagine they still do. Um, no, they're great games. Like Max Payne 3 is a bit more divisive, but I still think ultimately a good game. But Max Payne 1 and 2 really do just nail that, like, nor detective badass vibe. Is really good. The writing is top notch. Yeah, I like, get down uh, on those. If I were to just liken it to a recent example in your life, uh, without so much of the humor, but the same kind of like cadence and, and drama as like, um, dear reader, wizard people, maybe would be a similar analogy. To <laughs> All right, no, yeah, I can get down with it. Not quite that. Not quite as over the top. You get what I mean, but like the whole me meandering monologues of flowery influence. prose perhaps yeah 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 yeah, yeah. noir stuff yeah like yeah yeah i, I got you yeah um, now, uh, yeah i'll try those now i have not played the games but i have seen the mark Wahlberg film and that's pretty much the same experience as i understand it i think i seen that and i blocked it on my memory because i can't remember anything about it i just i, I never saw it i yeah Oh, I was making a joke because it's uh, apparently not very much like the game. Yeah, like, yeah, I remember. No, that's, I remember that's not why enjoying I didn't watch it. it. <laughs> uh, I had like angels or something, right? It was something crazy. Yeah, something, it was I remember mis- that from like the trailer. Misaimed marketing, I believe, because it's just like it depicted like a like a hallucination or something. It's that's not actually <laughs> part of it. Do I buy the original? It's on Steam for ten bucks, or do I wait for the remaster? I mean, it's probably going to fucking suck. What am I talking about, dude? What? I was like, John, In fact, what are you talking about? I probably got to buy it now bro? before they take it off the fucking yeah, store when the dude. remaster comes out. Yeah, I think that... I think that that marketing was supposed to allude to... I'm, I'm looking it up now. Look, look, allude, oh, yeah. I don't know about angels, but it's fear that gives men wings. It's one of the most famous quotes from that first game. Okay. Because I remember a scene from the movie and the trailer where he, you see him standing there and there's like shadow angels uh, like yeah. on the walls behind him. That's maybe what I'm thinking of. I think they that's, were playing off of like of. Constantine at the time or something like that. Oh, know. yeah, perhaps. Um, but by the way, these are, uh, you said like remakes or something, but they're they're saying in this article that they are straight up remakes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I when I read the article, I missed that, and I thought that the article was just alluding to it as a project. So, okay, okay they just are. Uh, and yeah, th- that was a discussion I, I kind of was getting as because like remedy with how Max Payne handles like bullet time and like that that being the central component of the action. I feel like remedy is like very well poised to make a great Max Payne remake. I also feel like Rockstar especially has a recent history of like taking their old beloved games and turning them into shit products so Mm -hmm. there's there's a bit of push and pull here i I guess on the balance you would expect it to be a good game because it's remedies actually making it you know but i guess it depends also on like how much rockstar can keep its hands off right the budget and like the freedom they've been given by rockstar right games take too long to make man we're talking about it now but we're not going to like see the results of these discussions for years that's how yeah. I feel about all this news. It's true. Life is too fucking short, man. 
<laughs> Life sure is strange. And Vito is f missing it. He's missing he's still it. still playing fucking crawl. No, he's not. I lied. <laughs> I lied. I lied. He's not. He's not. He's not. Yeah, but he's still green on that Discord. I he's can still see. green. He's fucking green. He's playing Elden Ring now. What the hell? <laughs> Wait, he's... One. What does it say on it, under his name, recording a podcast? What the... He's also streaming. He's doing all of those? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, Vito, it sounds like you're going to have a lot to discuss next week on the podcast. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. For sure. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. This is a long one, but a good one. Look look how much time we can fill without Vito. How much productive time? we got a lot of discussions in A today. lot in. If we he had him, just I mean, I would have been rushed. Probably yeah, only he would have heard of half of last games that he played. He would have made some condescending bit that would have, like, ruined... Oh, he would have said something. He would have yeah. just said it. Yeah, he would have... And he wouldn't care either. Nah. That's not his way. He wouldn't even think about it twice. No, not even once. He would have had a really upsetting reaction to that whole Activision thing. Oh, oh absolutely. I or, sorry, want, the, the Undead Labs that. thing. That would have been worse. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, listeners, hopefully next week we'll give you a little bit more of Vito. As always, hit us up on the Twitter at Broken Campfire, Broken Campfire at gmail.com. Stay frosty. Uh, play your video games, get some ghost hunts in. The last word on tonight's episode, I haven't done this in a while, is going to be somebody somebody named Greg. Me? Well. Good night.